Good evening, and welcome to tonight's episode of Hexbreaker, where we'll be continuing a playthrough of the Circle Undone storyline for Arkham Horror the Card Game. Tonight we're going to be playing the third scenario in the series, The Secret Name. So the story so far is that we've had Jenny and Patrice, they ran into each other in the woods outside of Arkham City, where they um, fought witches and uh, evil goat spawn of Shubnigaroth. Then later, they were, um, they both happened, probably coincidentally, maybe not, um, were invented to, invited to a gala at the Silver Twilight Lodge, which is a sort of gentleman's club slash hermetic order based in Arkham. Some uh, nasty things happened. They were drawn into the spirit realm, and they rescued one Yosef uh, Meiger, who seems to be a, uh, who's a prominent member of the lodge. They were in, and as a result, they were uh, given extended membership to the lodge, which um, the two of them, they, um, I wouldn't say happily, but I wouldn't say reluctantly accepted either. They were pretty surprised to find out that uh, this cocktail party turned into them joining a uh, some sort of gentleman's club. And then the next day, they are summoned into, um, they're summoned to see the president of the lodge, Carl Sanford. I imagine that... Um, the lodge sends cars to pick each of them up, and um, we start tonight in Carl's office. The upstairs study of the Silver Twilight Lodge is cozy, if a little cramped. The floor is covered in a plush carpet, and several comfortable sofas and small round tables fill the warmly lit room. Portraits of world-weary weary lodge members line the walls around you. Carl Sanford, president of the lodge, sits across from you, idly swirling a glass of Merlot in his wrinkled hand. The Silver Twilight Lodge pursues knowledge that can help us elevate our understanding of the universe, Mr. Sanford explains, pausing to take a sip from his wine. The creature you encountered in Josef Meiger's estate, its appearance is not the only particular peculiar happening in Arkham as of late. Tell me, have you experienced anything else currently, recently that might be connected to these events? So they, um, I imagine the two of them look to each other and they make the connection um, in their minds uh, you know, to, uh, they make the connection in their minds of um, what Carl is asking them about. And um, I guess they collectively, um, without a word, without a word between them, uh, decide to, uh, tell Mr. Sanford about the witches in the woods. You tell Mr. Sanford about your experience last week. Waking up in the middle of the woods, the strange mists that weave throughout the trees, the witches and their spell. So I imagine Patrice is the uh, primary speaker here. Carl leans forward and listens intently. As Patrice explains the night's strange events, her memory still somewhat of a haze. Patrice concludes her story, and the elderly man considers her words. Interesting, he says at last. I know of this coven. They are led by a witch named Annette Mason. Their magic is no trivial thing. They have passed down arcane secrets that can manipulate the energies of the universe. It is dangerous knowledge they possess, knowledge I believe they derive from a powerful witch who fled from Salem itself over 200 years ago. Does the name Kaziah mean anything to you? Jenny and Patrice, they nod. Everyone in Arkham has at least some passing knowledge of the witch whose ghost supposedly haunts the old condemned witch house in French Hill. Most believe her to be a work of fiction, a tall tale meant to scare young children away from the decrepit house. Mr. Stan Sanford's steely gaze and humorless tone makes it clear to you that this is not the case. Perhaps this Annette is a true descendant of Keziah, or perhaps she is simply using her name. In any event, I believe these events are connected. To that end, I have a task for you on behalf of the Silver Twilight Lodge. Carl Sanford rises to his feet, using his cane more for show than for balance. You rise as well, ready to perform whatever duties are necessary to get to the bottom of this mystery. We need as much information about this coven as we can obtain. If there is any place that will have these answers, it is the house where Keziah herself lived all those years ago. You nod in agreement. There are too many questions you need answered. What spell were the witches casting that night in the woods? What is their motive? And what is their connection to the creature that kidnapped those four unfortunate souls? You shake Mr. Sanford's hand, 
and depart for the witch house. Okay, so we have told the lodge about the coven. That means that we are going to be getting an additional cultist token in our chaos bag. I don't know if that is a good or bad thing on average, actually. Hmm. So it seems like cultist tokens represent our um, doing favors for the Silver Twilight Lodge. Okay, so I have set up the game here. This is uh, this board here represents the um, the, uh, the let's see the old um, the old house that Kaziah used to live in um, hundreds of years ago. So let's see what um, let's see what Jenny and Patrice need to do. What do we have here? The agenda here. What do we have? The Hermit Nine. Look for answers within and not without. Many paths lead to the same answer. Contemplate the greater truth. Okay, so we have four Doom, which is not that long compared to what we've been experiencing so far. Each non-weakness enemy gets plus one health. Okay, so monsters are tougher. And then we have a reaction that's going to trigger after we defeat Brown Jenkin or Nahab. Sounds like we get clues for defeating either of them. Okay, so it sounds like they'll be spawning, and I guess the more we deal with them, the uh, more clues we'll get from that. So what do we need to do? What does Jenny and Patrice need to do here? Investigating the witch house. When you arrive at the old witch house, you find it in a sorrier state than you imagined. Surrounded by a crooked picket fence, the house looks as though it may fall apart at any minute. The front door is locked, but you are able to easily enter through one of the windows after pulling apart the rotting wooden boards covering the shattered glass. Okay, so if each undefeated investigator is in Walter Gilman's room, okay, so they both need to be there, and then they can spend six clues to advance. Okay, so it sounds like what they need to do is they need to just um, explore this place, um, need to get to Walter Gilman's room. Okay, it looks like Walter Gilman's uh, room is locked, so they're going to need, they're going to have to, so they're really going to need eight clues, because to get in, they need to spend two. Okay, so they need to get eight clues from, at least two clues from these four locations and then you know the rest from uh, Walter Gilman's room okay so they have their uh, their task before them now let's take a look at the decks so we gained a few we gained a few experience points uh, after the last adventure so with Jenny I had her upgrade her derringers um, I actually really like the derringer uh, for one very important reason um, so you see at the bottom here, it says once per turn, if you succeed by three or more on your attack, you may take an additional action this turn. Okay, so what often happens when you're um, in an important fight, um, well, at least what will happen to me, is that uh, I'll try to boost the check up to like four over in order to really make sure I succeed and, and deal two damage. Because um, Derringer, you need to uh, succeed by, you can't just pass to deal two damage. So what often happens, like half the time, is I'll uh, try to, I'll uh, go to four over to try to deal two damage, and then I'll draw minus one, and it's like, oh, all that effort to get to four over was kind of overkill. So one thing I really like about the upgraded Derringer is, uh, first of all, um, you only have to succeed by um, one or more to get the second damage, but... Um, if you get into a situation like uh, I was just describing, which happens quite a bit, you get a whole other whole uh, additional action, you know, to do even more damage or to um, just you know get things done. So uh, I think this is a very underrated card, and I'm looking forward to playing with it. And so we have a new card here from the Dream Eater cycle. Um, so look at this easy mark. So it's it follows the myri new Myriad rules, and uh, if in case. Um, in case you're, uh, you don't have that set or you haven't heard of Myriad yet, um, what Myriad means is that you get to run three copies of, the, of this card in your deck, and all three of them cost... Um, you get, when you buy one, you get two free. So um, I only got had to spend one XP for, these easy, for all three of these easy marks. So if we take a look at this, um, it looks, at first glance, it looks very much like emergency cash. So you gain resources. Uh, only two, where Emergency Gash gains three. But you get a card instead of gaining the third resource. Now for Jenny, um, resources, because she collects two each turn, it's almost as if resources to her are worth a little bit less than they would be to a normal investigator, simply because, um, simply because... It, Simply because she's already gaining, you know, she's just gaining naturally twice the number that a normal investigator would get. So conversely, what this means is that um, getting a card and two resources to Jenny, I think, is better, is um, more useful than getting um, th 
three resources. Also, EasyMark has icons. Emergency Cache does not. So if Jenny gets into a position where um, she's got as many resources as she needs for the moment and she's fighting baddies or something or trying to investigate really quickly, um, EasyMark can always provide its icons where Emergency Cache never could. And then we've got an extra bonus here. After you play Easy Mark, you can play another Easy Mark from your hand at no cost. So this is kind of the myriad benefit. Um, all the myriad cards seem to have um, seem to synergize with themselves and having more than one copy. So um, what this means is that if Jenny's in a position where she just doesn't need to play the Easy Mark, you know, because she's doing other things, um, because she doesn't need the card provided by Easy Mark and she doesn't need the uh, resources. Um, when it hits, when she hits a point where she draws a second Easy Mark, and then when she gets a chance to play the first one, it's going to get her four resources and two cards. So um, what this means is that if Jenny's in a spot where she just doesn't need to play the first Easy Mark, eventually the second Easy Mark will come around, and then she'll be able to play both of them, which is uh, just pretty slick. I'm really looking forward to um, really fucking looking forward to trying out this uh, these new this new rogue myriad card. Okay, so now let's check out Patrice here. So Patrice, we've got a bunch of cards over here now in my uh, out of play area. So I've added Charisma because what's better than having, um, what's, have, what's better than having Peter Sylvester and David Renfeld having both in play at the same time? Charisma is a pretty much a staple. It's great. So the, between uh, David Renfeld and Peter Sylvester out at the same time, that's gonna they're both gonna boost your willpower. So that made this pretty essential. Something else I did. I wanted to try out this new card here, Miss Doyle, the cat, um, the cat general of Uthar. So Miss Doyle is gonna take up an ally slot, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna she's gonna summon the you know one of her uh, her three um, I guess cat soldiers. Um, spawn it right into play, which is important because that means um, Patrice doesn't have to uh, spend any resources putting the uh, putting the cat into play. Um, it's just going to start into play, start in play, which means uh, she doesn't have to worry about discarding it at the end of her turn. Okay, and they um, okay, so they all so one of, so one at a time they show up, and each one of them lets you do a test at a um, at a base either lore um, combat. Or evasion value of five. Well, check it out. Patrice's uh, Patrice's lore, combat, and evasion are all twos. So no matter which cat she uh, randomly starts off with, um, when she plays at the moment she plays it, Miss Doyle, it's going to represent a um, a plus three bonus over what she's already packing here when it comes to those three. Um, in addition, to the cats they. Um, in addition to the cats, they have the option to discard them in order to make the test automatically successful, which is really handy in like key situations such as key evasion checks. And then, um, and then also, see, it says here after you've discarded, if you end up discarding one, you can put the one of the other two into play from your discard pile. Now that doesn't cost anything, and since Patrice is going to be drawing through her deck and getting a pretty fat discard pile already, this means that odds. Are pretty decent of her being able to chain the cats together, being able to say use Augur, um, do an investigation check, discard Augur to automatically succeed, grab Hope, uh, put it right into play, so um, she can kind of keep the chain going. Uh, one thing to note is that if you, um... oh okay, sounds like you shuffle them into your deck. So when you shuffle them into her deck, this is Patrice. She's gonna, she blows through her deck pretty fast, so she'll be able to, you know, grab them again. They'll they'll come up. So I'm really looking forward to trying out the cats. I've also put in um, Stargazing. This seems like an interesting card. So it's um, it's going to serve the same purpose as Ward of Protection, uh, canceling a um, canceling a treachery card. Although Stargazing is a little different. Um, what it does is it shuff it um, it shuffles a copy of the Stars Are Right into one of the top ten cards of the um, Encounter deck. And when the Stars Are Right comes up, then an investigator draws a card, gains a resources, gains a resource, and can take an action, which is kind of overkill. Just the fact that you um, get to delay the encounter deck by a card is already pretty slick. So um, I I only need to include one copy. Um, so what's going to happen here is that um, Patrice can often get in a situation where she wants to use Word of Protection on something, but um, she draws a monster or, or something and she can't use the Word of Protection. Uh, Stargazing, um, she can just draw it, and if she has a spare action, she can just fire it off, knowing that 
the stars are right is going to come up and it's going to be it's going to be pretty important um when it comes up so it, it just means that during the turn when patrice has stargazing in her hand before she loses it she can um just fire off the stargazing um and it seems like and it's a pretty good decision i've only it can only be played twice per game so as a result i've only included one copy because patrice kind of blows through her deck pretty quickly and you know if she reshuffles stargazing in thanks to running her, um thanks to her deck running out or thanks to her elder sign uh, she has pretty decent odds of drawing the stargazing again um what I don't want to do is have two copies of Stargazing and then play them both, and then all of a sudden they're 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 only there for their question mark. So I'm kind of banking on getting to play Stargazing, shuffle it back in, and then eventually getting to play it a second time as the game goes on. Okay, so I'm gonna shuffle these two in. So, I'm gonna, so we've got some pretty exciting upgrades. We're using um, new cards from the Dream Eaters. That's the set, that's the um, set where Patrice Hathaway came in. Okay, so now that we've set up the board and we've gone over our excellent, excellent decks, um, we're going to draw opening hands. Okay, here we go. Let's start with Jenny here. All right. Give us more shuffles. And what do we got? Okay, oh, let's uh, hide that. Oh, we've already got two easy marks. That can be a nice little first action there. Okay, so what are we looking? For? What are we actually looking for? Um, I think, as usual, we want weapons and fingerprint kits. All right, so the intel report is nice, especially since we're going to have um, two easy marks. That's going to put us up to nine resources after the first action. So I think I'll keep one, but not both, because I'd like to get some assets here. Okay, let's see what we get. Turn forty-five's nice. So a little uh, Enchanted Blade, that's more what I'm looking for. Okay, so we've got our early game weapon to uh, put out there with um, the Enchanted Blade. Okay, so I'm thinking we'll go like Easy Mark, and that'll put us up to nine resources, then we can play the Enchanted Blade, and we can still afford an Intel Report. And then after the Enchanted Blade runs out, I'm pl I'll plan to uh, use the Twin 45s. Okay. Now Patrice, one, two, whoops. Let's shuffle that. Got a little stuck there. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Again, we're looking for assets, about five worth. Okay, so David Renfeld, that's good. That's going to get us some money. Um, once again, I am looking for assets, so I'm going to think I'm going to dump. This is just universally useful. Well, we may not have to make any skill checks in the first turn, so let's just dig for assets. I don't want to dig too hard, though, because I don't want to end up with, like, three assets. But that's the risk you take when you play Patrice. Okay, so we've got some good stuff here. I think we uh, I think we, we might have overdid it a little bit. Although I think we'll be fine if we go, if we play David Renfeld and the violin, that'll put us down to one resource, but then we can use the violin and use David Renfeld. That'll put us back up to three, which will let us play Peter Sylvester. So we've uh, dodged a bullet there by being able to afford everything. Okay, so let's before we start turn one, let's reveal the location. We start off in the moldy halls of the witch house. As you enter the witch house, you are immediately struck by the musty, stale air. The timber smells of decay and mold. Paper peels off the walls. It is no wonder this house was condemned. Okay, so we've got two clues here. And Shroud 4, which is actually quite a bit, but not too much for Jenny's. So I think I'll use Jenny's intel report here. Two clues, and then uh, also it's haunted, lose, two resource, lose three resources. Within the aged, decrepit walls of the witch house, the only signs of life are the rats which scurry in and out of holes in the walls. All right, so let's get started. We'll start with Jenny. So um, let's see. Just thinking about what could be the downside of playing Easy Mark, uh, we're going to draw two cards. So our weaknesses are going to be searching for Izzy, and um, the thing that follows. So nothing that's so it's nothing that's going to cause us to say discard or enchanted blade. All right, so here we go. So first action, let's um, play an easy mark to gain two resources. Oops, gain two resources and draw a card. And then we use the reaction on easy mark to play another e another easy mark, gain two more resources, draw another card. Okay, another enchanted blade. So we've got we've got weapons for days here. All right, second action, we'll get our enchanted blade out. Okay, and then third action, let's spend four resources to grab these two clues and just get that out of the way. Okay, so we're going to play Intel Report and 
boosts it up to discovering two clues. Okay, so that went pretty well for Jenny. We've discovered two clues and we've got a weapon out already. So that looks pretty good. Patrice, she's just gonna spend three actions getting resources as we talked about earlier. So first, so how much doom do we have to worry about? Four, okay, so this might be a little bit of trouble, but it's totally worth it. All right, first action we'll play David Renfeld. Use David Renfeld, get a doom. Yeah, David Renfeld's a pretty controversial card because of the doom. Um, however, when you play him, he he gets you a lot of resources every turn, and um, oops, I was supposed to pay for that. He gets you a lot of he gets you resources every turn, so he kind of pays for himself. And I think what but I think what really puts him over is the willpower. Um, so basically, I've just spent. I've just spent two resources, but I immediately gained one in order to be getting a willpower. Um, also, something that's not to be overlooked about David Renfeld is that he has two points of damage soak. Um, Mystics don't really have a lot of damage soaking cards, and um, neutral ones, I mean, the, the neutral damage soaking card, the premier one is, uh, what's it called? Um, Bulletproof Vest, and Bulletproof Vest is three XP, I believe. So, uh, and that takes up a body slot, which is which is actually pretty good if you're um, having a lot of trouble with uh, taking a lot of damage as a mystic. But David Renfeld's ability to um, be very cheap, in fact, starting next turn, he's gonna already have paid for himself, and gives you a willpower, which can stack on top of um, Holy Rosary, and he's got two points of uh, willpower, uh, two power points of damage soak. I think this guy's actually very underrated. Okay, third action, we're gonna play Peter Sylvester. Okay, so we've managed to play all three of our um, all three of our assets in three actions. So um, we are pretty much set for the game. We are rolling at six um, willpower right now, thanks to our upgraded Peter. So uh, things are looking pretty good after this initial turn. All right, so that's going to be all our actions. So we'll just draw cards and gain resources. Okay, and Patrice discards that, and we'll get five new cards. Okay, so the trick is, how are we going to get rid of David? All right, so next turn, we're going to probably play the Stargazing. And we've got Ward of Protection. Oh, we get a resource. And then we've got Ward of Protection this turn to cancel something if Jenny draws it. All right, this could be a little... This hand might be a little awkward. I guess we'll aim to use Drawn to the Flame. Okay, so that ends the turn. Now we're going to go to two Doom out of four. Okay, non-weakness enemies get plus one health. All right, and now we'll draw cards here. All right, extra dimensional visions. Okay, if you fail, discard an asset you control. Oh, this is an interesting one because um, because I have the Ward of Protection right here and I could just fire it off. Hmm, but it is only difficulty two. Yeah, because, yeah. So I'll just take the test and save the resource, maybe pitch that into like a skill test. Okay, so we're going to be testing at four, five, six. Um, action window opens. I'll use David Renfeld. Okay. So we're going to be at six versus two. Okay, success. So we do not fail that. All right, what do we got here? Realm of Torment. Put Realm of Torment to play in your threat area. When your turn begins, resolve each haunted ability on your location. Oh, so she's going to lose three resources just right out of the gate. Oh, that's awful. That is, that's rough. Sadly, we don't have our upgraded, we don't, the uh, water protection isn't upgraded, so Patrice cannot help out here. Yikes. Okay, so what do we do now? Okay, so we need to get some clues. We've already got two, so we actually already have enough to enter Walter Gilman's room. But I have a feeling Walter Gilman's room is not going to have the six clues we need in order to advance the agenda, advance the act. So we're going to have to visit some of these other places. Okay. Jenny's going to lose three resources when her turn begins, which is kind of nasty, but it's not the end of the world. Hmm. And then she's going to want to make this test. Okay, so we're probably just going to have Jenny um, walk around and investigate a little bit. Huh. But I think we're going to have Patrice go first, because Patrice is going to go stargazing as one action. Then I guess move and maybe play Drawn to the Flame, depending on the... Yeah, that Drone of Flames seems pretty good because we've got Ward of Protection to back us up in case uh, what comes out is bad. And if a monster comes out, then we can have Jenny come in um, and attack it with her Enchanted Blade. 
Okay, so we're gonna have Patrice go first. Uh, first things first, we're gonna use the uh, use the violin. Uh, we don't need this second David Renfeld, so let's give Jenny. Yeah, we don't need any real resources right now, so let's give Jenny probably a card. Jenny values cards or resources. Oh, there it is. Okay, so let's just put it in there. Okay, since they're all equidistant. Okay, so that was a non-action. So first action, let's just get it over with. We'll play Stargazing. Okay, so play if there are only 10. So this is a, let's see here. Play if there are 10 or more cards in the encounter deck. Let's check. There are, there are 33. Okay, search your bonded cards for one copy of the stars are right and shuffle it into the top 10 of the encounter deck. Okay, so let's grab the top 10 cards in the encounter deck. Whoops, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, flip this over, and give us a bunch of shuffles, and put it back. Okay, so we've got some nice boosts just waiting for us. All right, second action, we'll go here. This way, um, if we need to, Jenny can follow us in. We go into this decrepit door. All right, what do we have here? Stroud 2, two clues. After you reveal Landlord's Quarters, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a swarm of rats and spawn it in moldy halls. Shuffle the encounter deck. Yikes. Search the encounter deck. Oh, that's no good because now that we're going to shuffle the encounter deck, um, that means our. It means our where to go. Our st our uh, stars are right is gonna have to get shuffled around again. Yeah, where did the stars are right go? I shuffled it in, right? We all saw it. But where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, <laughs> so I guess that's the top. All right, so let's grab this swarm of rats. I saw one down here. Okay, and then we got a shuffling kind of deck. So who knows where the stars are right are are now? Hmm, maybe I should have waited. Oh well. Okay, so that gets spawned in the moldy halls, ah, not in the landlord's quarters. So this will go engage Jenny. Okay, so Jenny's going to have something to do. Okay, that was second action. Okay, third action, let's... It is only Shroud 2, but we're going to lose this Drawn to the Flame if we don't play it. So let's play Drawn to the Flame. Draw an encounter card. It's treachery. How nasty is this? Test willpower at four. If you fail, put it next to the agenda deck. Okay, so let's just, um, we'll use word of protection and we'll deal a horror to Peter in order to cancel this. Okay, so that worked out pretty well. And then we'll get the two clues. So we were two over on that test. I mean, I guess we could have pitched in the uh, unexpected courage and been four over, but um, we were gonna lose the word of protection if we didn't use it. And Peter's about to heal, which he does right now. Okay, so that was Patrice's turn. We went stars are right, move, and draw to the flame. So Jenny has some rats to deal with. Okay, we'll uh, we'll poke them with our enchanted blade. Uh, it, oh, they how many hit points? How many uh, health do they have? They have two health. So do we? Well, Jenny starts her turn and loses three resources thanks to Realm of Torment triggering Haunted. All right, so what do we do here? Do we use a charge? If we use a charge, we're going to be at five versus one, which is perfect, and then we deal two damage. Okay, and that'll help us keep moving. Uh, the other thing is, yeah, I guess that'll help us keep moving. We do also want to search for Izzy at some point. So I guess our question is, is it worth burning a charge in order to save an action? And since we have an en another enchanted bladed hand, the answer is probably yes. Okay, so we're going to be attacking the rats at five versus one. Okay, uh, success, so we defeat the rats. Okay, we're about to have a um, willpower check. We'll use the unexpected courage on that. Okay, so second action, do we go for Izzy? Well, even if we go for Izzy, um, yeah, even if we go for Izzy, we won't be able to search for Izzy next turn, so we'll have a whole action with nothing to do. So I guess second action, we'll head down to this decrepit door. Okay, okay, we've also got two clues here, then it says, Oh, okay, if you fail if you fail to investigate, you must either place one of your clues on Frank Elwood's room or place one doom on the current agenda. A desk covered in university papers and books occupies one wall of the cramped room. Perhaps a student once lived here. All right, so that was our second action. What do we want to do with our third action? There's really not much to do at this point. I mean, we could investigate, but it'd be three versus three, which and we don't want to fail this. So I think we're going to draw cards and look for more um, ways to investigate. So third action, draw card. There we go. That's nice. Okay, end of our turn. We got a test against Realm of Torment. 
we'll put in the unexpected courage so that way we're at five against three. Oh, mean. Oh, this is awful because next turn this is gonna we're gonna have to lose a clue. Small problem here. Small problem. All right, so that's all our actions. So let's draw cards and get resources. Okay, Tennessee Sour Mash. That's gonna be handy for dealing for testing next turn against Realm of Torment. Okay, and then Patrice draws five new cards. Okay, we've got a shriveling, very nice, and we're gonna be able to afford it. We've also got premonition, that's gonna be really handy. That'll help. Um it's gonna help Jenny. Okay, that ends the turn. So now we go to three gym out of four. So now we're looking for ways to get rid of Renfeld. So let's get our encounter cards. Oh, there it is. Stars are right. Okay, so choose an investigator. Uh, that investigator draws one card, gains a resource, and may take an immediate action as if it were their turn. So what do we do? I think I know what we do here. I think we give the action to Jenny. And here's why. If she's able to um, get out of the room before her turn starts, she won't have to burn a clue. She'll just have to lose three resources. Which, though nasty, is not really is. I think it's actually gentler than losing a clue. Okay, so we're gonna trigger the stars are right, and we'll remove it from the game. Choose Jenny, and she's gonna draw a card, take a resource, and get an immediate action. Okay, so we'll have her draw a card, take a resource, and we'll use the immediate action to. Uh, we'll get to that in a sec. Um, use the immediate action to get out of there. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I could do is I could burn the in I could play Intel Report as the action, but then her turn will start, and then, well, hold on a minute. If it's the Witching Hour, if it's the Witching Hour, then I guess putting a Doom on the current agenda. Uh, oh, on the current agenda isn't that bad. Hmm, that's not a bad idea actually. All right, let's go with that. So as our um, our bonus action from uh, the stars are right, we're gonna play Intel Report, spend four spend four resources, and whoops, don't get the location. We get two clues. Okay. Okay, so that's all out of turn, and now we'll resolve Jenny's encounter card, Meddlesome Familiar. If Brownshank is not in play, search the encounter deck and discard pile for him. Spawn him at your location and take a damage. Okay, uh, he is not in play, so we will search the encounter deck for him. All right, here's Brown Jenkin, this mean guy right here. Okay. Spawn him at your location and take a damage. Hmm. Okay. So does he engage immediately? He is aloof. Okay. Interesting. We take a damage. Okay, that's that. All right. So that's both of those. So what's going to happen here? We know that Jenny's going to have to put a doom on um, put a doom on the agenda, unless we want to lose a clue, which may not be the worst thing in the world right now. Um, we also have Brown Jenkin to deal with. All right, so let's take a look at this guy. He hunts. Okay, he's elite. Each ready creature gets plus two fight. Okay, so he is currently three fight. He has two health thanks to the agenda. But after we defeat him, we get a clue from the token bank. So we do have a reason to actually like engage and fight him. Okay, but then when the enemy phase ends, if he is ready, each, investig each investigator at his location discards his or hand, then draws that many cards. Okay, so to avoid that, we would either have to defeat him this turn, or we're going to have to both end up at, you know, we're, we're going to have to not be in the moldy halls, because he's going to hunt the moldy halls if we don't fight him. So let's see, what are our options here? Okay, so first question is, do I want to... Um, I'm not seeing a good way to um, get rid of David Renfeld, so I think we can embrace the fact that it's the Witching Hour. Which means that when Jenny's turn starts, we can safely put a Doom on the agenda. Um, and just, like I said, embrace the fact that it's the Witching Hour. Okay, so the first... Um, so who do I want to go first? Let's see, right now we're at six clues out of the eight we need, which is good. Okay, so it might be time to head on up to uh, Walter Gilman's room. Hmm. I've got Drawn to the Flame. I would like to use that this turn. Okay, and if I want to use Drawn to the Flame this turn, I'm going to need to make two moves to get to either Walter Gilman's room or the Decrepit Door. I'm 
kind of tempted to go to the Gilman's room. Okay, well, first things first. Let's have Patrice start. Play the premonition. Okay, so the next check that Jenny or Patrice makes is going to be at a minus two. Okay. First action. Oh, well, first things first. Reason David Renfeld. And since, uh, and since let's go with, the, we'll go with the witching hour plan, which means we can get two resources off of David Renfeld, since it's the witching hour. Another side benefit of using David. Okay. I'd like to play shriveling. But if I play shriveling, I'm not going to be able to go move, move, drawn to the flame. Uh, the choices we make in Arkham Horror. Okay, so I hate to say this, but I actually like the drawn to the flame plan because we have a ward to back us up. Okay. Okay, and then I can dump the shriveling for a resource. Okay but I don't need it yet. Okay, here we go. First action, move to the moldy halls. Second action, we're gonna spend two clues to go into Walter Gilman's room. Okay. All right. For whatever reason, this room was kept locked even after the building was condemned. You wonder where the key might be. So I guess the two clues represents us going to go find the key. All right, here we go. Four Shroud, that's quite a bit. All right, and as an action, you can draw three cards and take a horror, limit once per game, uh, or haunted, and then if we fail to investigate, we discard the top two cards of the encounter deck. Gilman's room was of good size, but queerly irregular shape, the north wall slanting perceptibly inward from the outer to the inner end, while the low ceiling slanted gently downward in the same direction. So that, yeah, this is, um, so this is the whole um, house is from the um, H.P. Lovecraft short story, Dreams of the Witch House, which is basically the inspiration for the entire cycle. Um, Brown Jenkin is actually a character in Dreams of the Witch House, and um, what well, the, uh, the general... Um, the general plot of uh, Dreams of the Witch House is actually really interesting. You have this uh, student, this um, physics student named Walter Gilman, and um, he becomes obsessed with uh, otherworldly, the concept of otherworldly geometry, and he develops a theory that um, witches, um, like the ones who were um, tried and burned in Salem hundreds of years, a uh, few hundred years ago, that Walter Gilman begins to believe that the secret to witchcraft is actually some sort of non-Euclidean otherworldly geometry. And he becomes fascinated by this witch house um, because of, because of its, um, because of Kaziah, the legend of Kaziah Mason, who, and that's who we're chasing right now. And um, he also becomes uh, intrigued by the mathematics of the um, construction of the witch house he um he's constantly staring into uh into the corners and like observing the really strange construction and the really strange angles and it's actually a, a pretty good short story and it's a it's a it's not a very long read so uh and i think it's all in the public domain so i highly recommend you check it out because it's totally worth it okay so we've spent two actions to move into walter gilman's room shroud four is a lot so let's uh let's go um let's stick to the plan and play drawn to the flame okay so we're going to draw an encounter card what do we got? Oh, rats! Oh, I was hoping for a, uh, I was hoping for a uh, a non, um, a non uh, creature card, so yeah, a non monster, so we could use water protection on it. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, so the rats um, spawn on top of us. Okay, so what else can we do here? Um, we'll use the violin. Let's not use it yet, because we might have Jenny come help us out. Okay, so Jenny, start of Jenny's turn. Oh yeah. I get the clues. What am I thinking? Oh yeah, that's why I played Drawn to the Flame. I get the clues. Yeah. So we we're gonna save the violin for in case Jenny shows up, because we can have Jenny draw a card. Yeah, we have enough resources. Oh, another possibility. Oh, the rats don't do enough to uh, t to take out David Renfeld. Kind of would have been kind of cool if they did, because then that could solve our problem. All right. So Jenny is going to, if we're gonna have her get rid of. Um, Brown Jenkins, she needs to engage Brown Jenkins, attack Brown Jenkins, and then move. Hmm. Or she can just walk up to Walter Gilman's room. We're going to have all six clues we need, interestingly enough. She can walk up to Walter Gilman's room and then stab the rats. That's actually not a bad idea. And that'll save um, Patrice some trouble. 
Okay, let's do that. Because then Brun Jenkins is going to move here, and then Jenny can go back down and deal with him next turn. Okay, so start of the turn, this triggers. Uh, also, if Jenny um, comes up into Patrice's room, Patrice can use the violin to give Jenny a card. I like it. Seems like we're taking a few extra mo more moves than I would expect, but because we're kind of wa walking across the house a lot, but I think this is going to work. All right, so what we're going to do is start of the turn. We resolve each haunted ability. So we're going to either put a clue on his room or place a doom on the agenda. So we're going to place a doom on the agenda since it's the witching hour. All right, so first action, move to the Moly Halls. Second action, move to Walter Gillen's room. All right, so we know that the next test we take is going to be at a minus two. Um, thanks to Brown Jenkin, um, these rats are three to fight. We know that if we use our Enchanted Blade, we're going to be at five to fight. So five minus two is three. So if I just do this, I cash in this token. So I cash in the, the, the um, premonition, and we defeat the rats. Very nice. OK, so that was all three of her actions. Uh, before her turn ends, we have an um, action window with which I'll sadly discard this shriveling to give Jenny a card. Probably should have done that before she fought the rats. Um, oh well. OK, so end of Jenny's turn. She needs to make a check, uh, a willpower check. Can Patrice help? She can pitch in one, um, one question mark. OK, so now we're at four versus three. And this is kind of important, so we'll do five, six versus three. Success by, well, we succeed. She gets plus zero because she doesn't have any resources. Okay, but that's gone. Very nice. Because haunted kind of is kind of troublesome. All right, so now we go to the enemy phase. Brown Jenkin moves into the moldy halls. And now we'll go to upkeep. So we're going to draw a card and gain two resources. Okay. Patrice is going to draw five new cards and gain a resource. OK, uh, six cents is good to have, so we'll be playing that next turn. OK. Nice, and able-bodied is, uh, is worth three combat and three agility right now, which is also very nice to see. Sadly, we're about to um, advance the agenda, so prophecy is going to be less good. OK. Okay, so that'll end the turn. So now we start a, we're going to start a new turn. We go to a whole bunch of doom. <laughs> we go to, what's a six doom out of four. All right, and we advance the agenda. What do we got here? Okay. Rats in the walls. As you explore the old dilapidated house, the telltale scratching and scurrying in the walls becomes louder and more frequent. Every now and again, a fanged furry creature darts across the wooden floor, scampering in and out of rat holes in the walls. You wonder if this house is more rat than wood. Okay, so Brown Jenkins is in play, which he is. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a swarm of rats and spawn it in Brown Jenkins' location. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're going to do that. Let's grab the one. Let's grab one from the encounter deck here. Then we'll give that a whoops. Give that a shuffle. Okay, and spawn it in his location. Okay, so we've got tons of rats chasing us. Yep. Okay, new agenda: the familiar. The descriptions of the darting little furry object, which served as her familiar, were so painfully realistic, despite their incredible details. Each non-weakness enemy gets plus two health. Okay, so the rats are getting tougher. And after we defeat Brown Jenkin or Nahab, we get a clue from the token bank. And we have six doom this time. Okay, so that was the advancing the agenda. So now these guys are tougher. Okay, and now we'll do encounter cards. What do we got? Fate of all fools. Ooh, now I wish I had a way to cancel this. Yikes. So we are going to put this in our flood area. Okay, and then over to Jenny, we have evil past. Put this into play in your threat area. Okay, so when the encounter deck runs out, she's going to take some horror. And when Fate of All Fools comes up again, she's going to take some damage. Okay, so encounter cards that didn't do anything immediately, but can potentially be very nasty. Kind of wish the order was reversed because um, Patrice is very good at, at taking horror, thanks to Peter, or rather Peter is. All right, so what do we need to do? We can just spend six clues in advance. I kind of like this idea. Let's do that. And hopefully things won't get worse for us. 
Okay, we're both in Walter Gilman's room, and we kind of needed to be in order to um, advance. So let's do that. Okay, what happens? Specter of the past. Standing in a dead man's room is disconcerting enough, but what you find within is enough to make you want to leave and never return. Walter Gilman's journal is filled with descriptions of his dreams and visions, each more terrifying and perplexing than the last. He mentions seeing the figure of Keziah Mason on more than one occasion, and at one point calls her by another name, Nahab. As soon as you read the name aloud, the nearby window shatters, and an all-too-familiar spectral mist invades the cramped space. Uh-oh, we're in the upside down again. When it recedes, everything about the room has changed. A work desk and an aged bookshelf occupy the far corner of Gilman's room, where his bed should be. The door you entered from is gone. Strange geometrical markings drawn with a sticky red substance cover the walls. Okay. So swap Walter Gilman's room with the set-aside Keziah's room. Okay. So it looks like... Um, okay, then taking his place. Remove each other location and play from the game. Okay, so I'm going to set this up, and I will be right back. Okay, so I have transported us back into the upside down here. So what this means is that the map is gone and replaced by a lone location, Keziah's room. As a result, um, Brown Jenkins and that rat swarm is gone, and searching for Izzy is gone. Excellent. Okay. So we're now um, just in Keziah's room. Uh, another thing has also happened. Um, we found a... Oh, where'd it go? Oh. <laughs> I, need to, I need to spawn... Where'd it go? The Black Book. And give that to... We'll give that to Patrice because the black book it's going to provide an additional one to her willpower as well as her um as well as her intellect and plus she doesn't really need the other hand for anything else okay and so what do we got here when you play a card exhaust the black book and take x horror or rather peter is going to take x horror to reduce that card's cost by x that's not so bad um this is actually going to work out pretty well plus we can uh, use the black book to um, get rid of david renfield in a pinch so this is going to be really handy all right so we have so we have uh, set up the board, we've uh, taken control of the black book, and we've shuffled strange geometry into the encounter deck. So that's going to be a new location we might run into. So we advance to Act 2, Beyond the Witch House. Among the books in this strange room is a black, nameless tome inscribed with dried red blood. It matches a description from Walter Gilman's journal of a tome he names the Black Book. This room must be the haunt of Keziah Mason from over 200 years ago. It is rumored that Keziah, that Keziah had discovered deep mathematical truths that allowed her to traverse space and time. Perhaps you can find a way out using this knowledge. Okay, so we're going to need ten clues. Yikes, it's quite a bit. And we need to be at the Witch House Ruins, which is not on the map right now. Okay, so we start off in Keziah's room. Gilman could not have told what he expected to find there, but he knew he wanted to be in the building where some circumstance had more or less suddenly given a mediocre old woman of the 17th century an insight into mathematical depths perhaps beyond the most modern delvings of Planck, Heisenberg, Einstein, and De Sitter. Okay, so what do we got here? It has, oh, no clues, Shroud 3, and it says, after you successfully investigate Keziah's room, you can, instead of discovering clues, put the top card of unknown places into play. That's something I uh, prepared um, before the video started, but if we fail, then we discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a hex is discarded and draw that card. Okay, so we need to investigate Keziah's room and use that to spawn unknown places, and I imagine that's where we're going to find our 10 clues. I imagine it's also where we're going to find the Witch House Ruins. Okay, so I've kept these location connectors because I knew we were going to need them. All right, so we haven't spent any actions yet, so we need to actually make investigation checks. Um, who's good at it? Well, Patrice is going to be good at it once she plays Sixth Sense, because that'll let her investigate. That's good. So why don't we have Patrice go first, because her investigation is going to be pretty good. Okay, first things first, we're going to put a Doom on David Renfeld to get a resource. Okay, we have six to work with, so that's going to be fine. Okay, I'll use the violin in a sec. Okay, first action will play Sixth Sense so we can start investigating for real Z's. All right, so it says after you successfully investigate, you can move to that location. So let's use the violin before we move to the location. Well, we don't need this Peter. So I'm thinking we'll discard Peter to give Jenny, I'm thinking a resource 
Yeah, I'm thinking of resource because I wanted to play Tennessee Sour Mash this turn. That'll be handy. Okay. Yeah, we have enough resources. We're going to be fine. Okay. Oh, and one thing we could have done is we could have used the we could use the black book. Yeah. So we're going to exhaust the black book and we're going to deal Peter two horror to only have to spend one on our six cents. I like this black book already. That's probably a bad idea though. Yep. Patrice is going to go mad, isn't she? I love it. Okay. So um, first action, we play six cents with a discount of two. We've already activated David Renfeld and our violin. Second action, let's investigate using six cents. We are currently at four, five, six, seven versus three. That's a pretty good place to be. Don't even need to boost. Okay. Seven versus three, minus two, we succeed. So we, um, we don't discover any clues. Instead, we put the top card of unknown places into play and then move to it. Okay, so here we go. Ah, let's just put it over here. Okay. And we move to it, and we put in a location connector. Okay. It was also possible that the inhabitants of a given dimensional realm could survive entry to many unknown and incomprehensible realms of additional or indefinitely multiplied dimensions, be they within or outside the given space-time continuum, and that the converse would be likewise true. Okay, so we made it into a physics classroom. Okay, it's got it's worth a victory point, so we want this. A place of higher learning or a place where higher learning is shackled. So this actually, um, this this represents um, Walter Gilman's um, studies. In fact, um, one thing I do recall from uh, from the story is that Walter, um, he starts, um, he starts developing pretty decent theories and he starts impressing his classmates with his theories about otherworldly um, witchly geometry. And as you can see, it's uh, this physics classroom is at Miskatonic University. Okay, so it says here, after you successfully investigate physics classroom by two or more, discover a clue at another revealed location. Limit once per round. Okay, that's handy. So that means when Jenny goes to find another spot, which I think I'm going to have her do, Patrice will be able to maybe discover multiple clues. Okay, so that is our second action. Third action, I think we just need to start investigating. Um, we are currently at seven versus seven versus four. We're not going to need these for anything else, so let's just dump them. Seven will make it nine versus four. Yeah, we can't really go any farther than that. Yeah, we'll do that with six cents. Nine minus three is six, so uh, we okay. We get a clue. Uh, we don't have. There are no clues at any other revealed locations, so we're not going to be able to trigger that. All right, so we do that. Okay, and then end of her turn, Peter heals. Okay, so that is Patrice's turn. Now we'll move to Jenny. Okay, so Jenny needs to investigate Kazaya's room. How is she doing? We also want her to play Tennessee Sour Mash. Yeah, let's do that right now. Okay. Okay. So sadly, her uh, she's only at three for investigate right now. Yep, Cunning's only going to give her plus one. So that is too bad. So I think we just need to have, and we don't want to fail, you know, and start drawing hexes. So I think we're gonna have Jenny draw cards. So first action, we'll draw a card. Oh, first action, we play standard Tennessee Sour Mash. Second action, we draw a card. Third action, we'll draw another card. Okay, Derringer, very nice. Okay, so we're a little short in resources in order to play things, um, in order to play like another weapon. And we are kind of low on investigate icons. I could really use a Lola Santiago right, right now. Or, if, yeah, I could really use a little Santiago. I could also use some resources to power this cunning. All right, so that ends Jenny's turn. So we now have no enemies anymore because we, uh, Brown Jenkins, got discarded from play. How relieving. So we're going to draw cards and get resources. So we'll start with Patrice. Okay, so he gets five new cards. The tower. Okay, we're going to have to... We are going to have to uh, play the tower before we get to commit like this prophecy or this resourceful. Okay, but we have shriveling. That's that's handy. So I think next turn we're going to go tower, shriveling, investigate. Okay, so Jenny draws a card and gets two resources. Okay, so she's got a full hand, and if if monsters show up, she is she. If monsters show up, she is ready. Okay, that ends the turn. 
So now we'll go to two Doom out of six, thanks to David Renfeld, and let's draw some encounter cards. What do we got? Extra dimensional visions. Okay, so this is going to be, so the difficulty of this one is going to be based on the number of cards in the encounter discard pile. She has, there are only eight cards in the encounter discard pile, so this is only difficulty two. So we are at four, five, six, seven versus two. Okay, uh, what's the cultist? Reveal another chaos token. Seven versus two, we still succeed, so we are fine. Okay, that's gone. Okay, over here, what do we got? Meddlesome Familiar, up, oh, Brown Jenkins back. <laughs> okay, here we go. He, let's see, if he is not in play, search the encounter deck and discard pile for him. Okay, spawn him at our location and take a damage. You see nibbles on our, this little, this little jerk just nibbles on our, uh, on our ankles. Okay, so Brown Jenkins here. So that means Jenny can just beat him up. Okay, that actually will work. We can beat him up and get a clue that way. All right, so um, I think we're going to have Jenny go first. Yeah, so she can beat up Brown Jenkins and maybe investigate. Because if she investigates and goes to a new location, then when Patrice uses Sixth Sense here, um, she might be able to trigger this and get a clue from Jenny's location. So we want Jenny to go first. Okay, here we go. So Brown Jenkins, he is currently at three to fight, and he has three health thanks to the agenda. All right, so we're gonna have to stab him a couple of times. Another possibility is we use Cheap Shot. Yeah, we only have one ammo left, only one charge left in our Enchanted Blade. So it's gonna take two actions to do three damage. If we use Cheap Shot, that if we engage him and then use Cheap Shot, that means we'll evade him and he'll be exhausted, which means when she uh, attacks him again, he'll only be at difficulty one. I like this plan. Okay, so, oh yeah, so he's actually aloof, so I shouldn't have spawned him there. Okay, so first action, we engage Brown Jenkin. Okay, so getting rid of Brown Jenkin is gonna, she, Jenny's not gonna be able to investigate this turn, but that is okay. All right, second action, play Cheap Shot. Okay, so currently we are at six versus three, and we want to succeed by two. So I think this is the part we're going to use overpower. So we're going to be at eight versus three. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, so we fail that. Oh, that's awful. Okay. All right, so we don't want him to be ready. Uh, fortunately, he's not going to be ready because he's going to attack Jenny at this point. All right, so he's current. he's still three to fight. Okay, so I think we'll just stab him with the Enchanted Blade at 5 versus 3. Seems fine. Yeah, these are... Are we in an extra dimensional location? We are not. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the skulls being minus 3. Okay, so we're going to attack him with the Enchanted Blade at 5 versus 3. Success. Okay, so we deal 2 damage. Okay, that did not go as planned. Tentacles are always awful. Okay, so Patrice, I guess she'll just try to get this clue and then come back to Gazaya's room. We also want to play our shriveling and play our tower. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah, we can afford it. All right, we use David Renfeld to get a resource. Okay, so we go first action shriveling. Second action, the tower. Okay, so now those are out of our hands. Let's, hmm. Yeah, we'll investigate the physics classroom. So another possibility is I was thinking we can move out and then give Jenny a card with the violin, but then we have to, we still have to get that clue from the physics classroom. So let's investigate. All right, so we are currently, if we investigate with Sixth Sense, we are currently at seven versus four. We don't really have any need for these, so let's just, guess, dump our stuff in. All right, how are we doing on Doom? We have two Doom, so this is only worth one question mark. So currently we're at seven versus four. Let's go to eight, and why the heck not? We'll go to nine versus four. Okay, reveal another token. Okay, that's going to be a minus three, so that's a success. So we're going to get this clue. Okay, and then we're going to use the violin, discard resourceful to get a resource, since we can't use it for anything else. Okay, Peter heals. 
Okay. Now we go to the enemy phase. Brown Jenkin bites, and even though I uh, I always skip over this, you know, for convenience, he actually exhausts when he bites, which means his effect won't trigger at the end of the enemy phase. That only works if he is um, still ready. So like if he's unengaged. Okay, so he bites Jenny. All right, now we go to cards and resources. Okay, get an easy mark, draw two cards, uh, two resources, and then we get five new cards for, for Patrice. Ooh, Miss Doyle. Um, we're out of room, but we might be able to make something work. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about playing Miss Doyle next turn. Yeah, we might be able to overwrite Renfeld for, for the cats. Okay. So that ends the turn. Now we'll go to a new turn. We're going to be at three Doom out of six. And let's draw encounter cards. Pulled by the stars. Put it into your threat area. At the end of your turn, if you did not move at least once, take two horror. Ouch. And then you can test willpower as an action to succeed. If there's an exhausted witch, it's automatically successful. Okay, so we're going to want to get rid of that pretty soon. Meddlesome familiar again. Okay, so search the encounter deck and discard pile for a swarm of rats, spawn and engage with you and take a damage. Oh my gosh, Jenny's just man, she's just getting swarmed by rats all the time. Are there any more left in here? Uh no, there aren't. Wow, Jenny's just getting keeps getting bitten by rats. It says spawn it engage with you and take a damage. Okay. Yikes. So she's starting to hurt here. Okay, but fortunately, Brown Jenkins has one hit point, and then when he's dealt with, then that'll make the rats easier to deal with. They have three hit points, too, which is kind of awful. That is awful. Three's a lot. All right, but fortunately, um, Patrice can help. Okay. So I want to play Miss Doyle. So that's going to be an action. I also want to... Then I'll... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Miss Doyle, walk in to help Jenny. That'll deal with Pull by the Stars for a turn. And then she can help out by shriveling. Okay, that'll work. Okay, so so we're planning to overwrite David Renfeld. <coughs> so I'll put a second Doom on him and get two resources. Okay. First action, I'll overwrite David Renfeld with Miss Doyle, the Cat General of Ulthar. Okay, so when she is in play, we're going to... We're going to take Hope, Zeal, and Augur, randomly choose one to put into play, and shuffle the other two into her deck. Ah, come on, Tabletop, you can do this. Make a pile. Come on, make a pile of cats. What? Come on, just do it. Come, come on, come on, Tabletop Simulator. You can do it. Oh, come on. Why can't we just make a pile of cats? Come on, they're, they're cards. You can do this. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we're going to... Okay, which cat do we get? We get... Zeal. So Zeal is going to do a fight check for us. Okay, other two get shuffled into the deck. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so Zeal. How's this going to work? If Zeal is ready, exhaust or discard her to fight. Fight with a base fight of five, but if we discard her, it's automatically successful. Okay. And if we discard her, we can uh, automatically put Hope or Augur into play from our discard pile. Okay. So we so it's auto success, but also fighting at five. Pretty handy. Okay, so that was first action. We played Miss Doyle. Second action, we're going to move into Kazai's room. All right, so now we're going to help out. Jenny is out of charges, so I think using shriveling is what we're up to here. Another possibility is she can take out Brown Jenkin. No, I think we want to shrivel. Yeah, because Jenny using her Enchanted Blade on the rats is going to be kind of kind of tough. All right, so we need to, to turn out some damage here. So we're going to shrivel the rats. Okay. We are at... We lost David Renfeld, so we are going to be at four... Let's see... Four, five... Six versus one, two, three. Six versus three. Hmm. We've got Lucky to help. We can also use Defiance at this point. I think we're going to save Defiance for Jenny, though. Yeah, because we're succeeding on everything but, like, the minus four. And on the minus four, we have Lucky. 
Okay, so we'll test. Success, okay. So we take a horror from the shriveling, which goes on Renfeld, and we're gonna do two damage to the rats. All right, so that was our third action. Uh, now we'll go ahead and use the violin. Okay, also Peter heals at the end of the turn. And then at the start of Jenny's turn, we're gonna use the violin, drop this six cents, and we'll give Jenny, well, she's got a full hand, so we'll give her a resource. Okay, seems fine. Okay, so Jenny. Actually, let's not discard six cents. Let's discard Lucky because we cannot use Lucky just at all because it doesn't have the icons. Okay, we've satisfied pull by the stars. All right, so Jenny needs to um, first start by stabbing Drone Jenkin. He is a fight of three. Okay, if we use the Enchanted Blade, we're at a fight of four. Okay, four. Uh, the Defiance can put her up to five. The Resourceful can put her up to six. Six versus three. I kind of like this. Okay, so we're gonna name def we're gonna play defiance. We'll name. Let's name the cultist. Yeah, so that way we won't have to reveal another chaos token. It'll just be a zero, and then we'll put resourceful in as well. Okay, so we're gonna be at three, four, five, six versus three. Okay, we name the cultist, and thanks to defiance, the cultist is considered a zero. So we defeat Brown Jenkin. <coughs> And okay, and something happens when we defeat Brown Jenkin. We get a clue from the token bank. Okay, so Jenny gets a clue for doing that. That was her first action. Second, let's take out these rats. These rats are now our difficulty one. So we're just going to stab them with the enchanted blade. We're going to be at four versus one. Uh, that's a minus one, so that's a success. Defeat the rats. Okay, one action left. We have three resources. Let's get a new weapon. I'm going to go with the Derringer. Okay. Okay, let's give it some ammo. I think when I demonstrated them earlier today, um, that's where the ammo went. All right. So that is all of our actions. Oh, yeah, I could have used the Black Book on uh, Miss Doyle. Oh, well. Okay. So, cards and resources. Jenny draws a card. Well connected. Not really useful at the moment, but maybe later. Gains two resources. Patrice gets five new cards. Okay. Hypochondria is in play. Okay. Winging it, that's good. And we have another cat. Okay, that's handy. So the reason why, um, so the reason why the cats are, I think, are going to work particularly well in this uh, in this strategy in this Patrice deck is I can go use the violin, discard the cat, and then um, I can use zeal and uh, to fight something and then pull auger out of the discard pile if i discard zeal say combinations all right so new turn we're going to be at three doom out of six and we'll draw new encounter cards diabolic voices okay so we're going to test willpower um and it gets plus one difficulty for each diabolic voices the encounter discard pile i don't think there are any because i haven't seen any yet let's double check yeah so we're going to be at I believe four, five, six versus three. So I feel pretty decent about that, especially since we have lucky success. Okay, over here, Terror in the Night. Okay, so this is something we, we're okay with failing, but we don't wanna fail by too much. So we're gonna use Tennessee Sour Mash. Okay, so we're gonna be at five versus four. I'm pretty good with that. Success. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that at all. All right, so we have no monsters now. Now it's time to start investigating. And thanks to Sixth Sense, Patrice is still better at it. Although we can have Jenny go first and use Easy Mark. Yeah, I'll have Patrice go first. Okay, so Patrice, um, we are going to drop the auger in order to give Jenny, I think, resources. She just needs resources, ironically enough. All right, we'll do that. Give her a resource. Okay, so if we um, investigate, we're gonna be at six versus three. I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, if we use six cents, we also have hypochondria to worry about, but we're doing okay right now. Okay, six versus three with six cents. All right, we succeed. So we are going to grab an unknown place Okay, and we're gonna move to it. 
four clues. It's worth a victory point, though. That's nice. And after you enter the Twilight Abyss, test fists or feet at three. And for each point you fail by, take a damage. Oh, that's kind of kind of not good for Patrice. Those organic entities whose motions seemed least flagrantly irrelevant and unmotivated were probably projections of life forms from our own planet, including human beings. All right, so we need to test combat or agility. Our agility is three right now, thanks to Peter. So I just, I guess we're just going to have to go with that. Three versus three and hope and lean on lucky. Minus two. Well, that's enough for Lucky. We'll use the black book to um, reduce the cost of Lucky by one and give that horror to Peter. So then we play Lucky. Okay. So we're fine. We don't take any damage. All right. When we enter that. So I guess we're going to have Patrice. We're going to have to like have Patrice park here and just get clues. Okay. Next turn, I'll use winging it. Okay. But for this turn, we'll just use six cents. Yeah, so we went, what did we just do here? We went, what, first action investigate. So that moved her. Yeah, we didn't play anything else, did we? First action investigate, that moved her. Okay, we have moved, so we don't have to worry about pulled by the stars. Although, now that we have guts in hand, maybe using pulled by the getting rid of pulled by the stars now would be pretty cool. It is difficulty three. We're currently at a six. Yeah, let's just get rid of this because we're going to be parked here for a couple of turns. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to test against pulled by the stars. We're going to be at six. We're going to go to eight. Eight against three. Success. So we get rid of pulled by the stars and get a card from Guts. Oh, live and learn. That's going to be handy when we do our investigations. Third action, we'll investigate with six cents. Okay, investigate, pull by the stars, and now investigate with six cents. So we're going to be at six versus two. Uh, minus four is still a success, so we get the clue. <coughs> okay, end of her turn. We'll remove a horror from Peter Sylvester. Okay, so Jenny. I guess we don't really need to go in there. Jenny just needs to investigate some more and get some resources. So let's go easy mark to get two resources and a card. Okay, not bad. Okay, but we still don't have any boost to investigation. Uh, well, we do. We can use cunning to boost by two. But it's not... That's going to put us at five versus three. I want to be... I guess five versus three isn't so bad. All right, let's do it. Second action, investigate at five versus three. We'll use the cunning to boost ourselves. Oh, ouch. Ouch. So we fail that and have to discard cards until we get a hex. That's kind of mean. So we get bedeviled. Cannot trigger, oh, cannot trigger um, action abilities. Yikes. And uh, I think we have to wait to refresh our shower, sour mash until we have, before we have a good chance of dealing with that. I mean, we could test it with guts, but I'm going to wait for the sour mash. Okay, so we're back to square one. Let's play the well-connected at this point because um, we're going to spend two right now, but then we're going to go back up to five and then well-connected will get turned on. So that is all our, all our actions. Okay, so let's um, draw cards and get resources. Lone Wolf, a little late, but it's still a fine time to get it. Say so we lose these and get five new cards. Deck's running low here. Got eight left. Okay, we got a cat. We got a premonition. We got to recall the future. These are all pretty nice. New turn. We are at 40 minus 6. Okay, I feel like we need to get moving here. Get some encounter cards. Ooh, evil past. Okay, so she's going to be taking some horror. And centuries of secrets. Ooh. Okay, so she's going to have to just make a willpower test and totally fail it. Okay, we were at 3. Ouch. Okay, reveal another chaos token. 0. So we fail. So we discard the top three cards in the encounter deck to the cultist here. One, two, three. Okay. And then, all right, so we were at three versus five, uh, three versus five, so we fail by two. So we discard two cards in the encounter deck, and if a curse is discarded, we deal 
a damage to our investigator. Okay, so we lose two cards and see if there's a curse. No curse, no curse. Okay, so she's fine. Okay, so Jenny needs to get rid of Bedeviled. Yeah, this seems like a good idea. So I think we're going to have Jenny go first here because I know we know what Patrice is going to do. All right, so Jenny, um, we are going to burn the guts and use Tennessee Sour Mash to be at seven versus three. We are not messing around. Success by a zillion, so we get rid of it. Okay, that's good. Let's get the Lone Wolf out finally. No, let's not do that because right now, Well Connected is turned on. All right, so if we investigate and use Well Connected, we're gonna be at four versus three, which is not that great. So we're going to take this opportunity to, I guess, build up. Uh, second action, draw a card. Ah, Lola Santiago. She's going to be great next turn. Okay, but first we're going to play Lone Wolf to get that going. And then next turn we're going to play Lola Santiago, and then life is going to be PG. Okay, so over to Patrice. Okay. What do we need to do? We need to just get clues. Okay, it's only Shroud 2. And there's no haunted effect, which means that look what I found is uh, pretty prime right now. Okay, we'll discard hope to our. Ooh, another thing we can do is wing it. Uh, we'll discard this winging it to get a resource. Okay. So let's do some. Let's uh, let's wing it a little bit. I uh, should have played Premonition for Jenny. Oh, well. Okay, so our first test is going to be at minus two. Okay, so if we wing it from the discard pile... Oh, we can play Recall the Future. That's what we can do. Yeah, first action, Recall the Future. That'll let us guess tokens, such as this one. All right, I like it. Okay, first action, we play Recall the Future. Let's get some clues. Second action, let's use the black book, deal a horror to Peter to get up one discount on our winging it. Play that from the discard pile. Okay, so our location is going to be Shroud 1. Okay, our, we are at 2 right now to investigate. Okay, we know we're going to get a minus 2, so we know we're going to get a 0. But if we name the minus 2 token with Recall the Future, then it's going to be okay. Or we can hold off and recall the future and just commit hope to the test. I like this even more. Okay, so we commit hope to the test. We now are at three versus one. We trigger the minus two from the from the premonition, and we succeed on our winging it test. Pretty slick. And we get two clues, which means there's only one left. Okay, that was our second action. Okay, third action. Now we'll investigate using six cents. We are at four, five, six versus two. Pretty good. Uh, with the recall of the future, let's name the cultist. I don't know why I did that, but I guess it seems good. Okay, that's a minus three, so we succeed and get the last clue. Okay. Uh, if we if there was a location connected, we could have gotten another clue, but there isn't. Okay. End of Patrice's turn. We heal a horror. Okay, so how are we doing? We are at six, seven clues out of ten, so we're doing okay. Okay, no monsters to deal with, so we're just going to draw cards and get resources. Okay, so now that we got the money rolling, this is going to, I think Pat Jenny is finally on track here. Okay, so we're going to discard this and get five new cards. Man, this uh, watcher from another dimension is going to pop up at any moment now. Oh, there he is. Okay. Fortunately, we're going to use Zeal to get rid of to deal with him. Pretty cool. Get a resource. All right, new turn. We are at five doom out of six. We are in the witching hour. Get encounter cards. Up oh, diabolic voices again. So we're going to test willpower, um, and it's going to get bigger for each diabolic voices in the discard pile. Let's see how many there are. I think there's one. There's just one. So we are testing at willpower against willpower four. We currently have a six. Okay, six versus four, and what happens if we fail? Discard cards at random from our hand. That's not the worst thing in the world, because we have things like living it and live and learn, winging it and live and learn. 
So I guess we can go at six versus four. Let's, are we at an extra dimensional location? We are? Okay, so we'll name the skull with um, recall the future so the skulls are covered. Six versus four, minus two, success, okay. All right, Jenny, Fate of All Fools. So we either put a gem on another copy of Fate of All Fools, which we are totally gonna do because it is the witching hour, and so we dodge the nastiness of Fate of All Fools, okay? Because Fate of All Fools won't, won't advance. Won't advance the agenda. All right, so here we go. So Jenny needs to uh, investigate. Patrice just needs to deal with the Watcher because it's about to trigger. Yeah, and um, move out. Okay, so Patrice, we are going to use Zeal. Okay, uh, we're going to discard Zeal to fight the Watcher, and we're going to automatically succeed. Man, this is pretty sweet. <laughs> okay, and then since we automatically succeeded, we can shuffle Zeal into our deck to grab one of the other two cats. Okay, I think we're gonna want, do we want the evasion cat or the investigate or the investigation cat? We're doing okay in investigation, so let's grab the evasion cat. That's gonna be hope. Okay, so he is gone. Okay, pretty good. So that was first action. Second action, let's play our holy rosary. Okay, that should be in our necklace slot, so I should put it right there. Okay, um, put Zeal or Argon to play to your discard pile. Right, okay. Second action, played Holy Rosary. Uh, let's drop the winging it to get a resource. And we could just play Ace of Rods for the heck of it. Or we can move out. Well, Ace of Rods, we got the money now. Yeah, it seems, doesn't seem too bad. Oh, but it'll overwrite the tower, and then the tower is going to get shuffled back in. We don't want to do that. So... We'll move out back here. Okay. So if we're moving out, I'm not gonna, so I'm actually gonna roll that back. I'm gonna use the violin to give Jenny a resource and not um, Patrice, because Jenny needs it a little more, I think. Okay. Although ironically, by going here, it means that Jenny doesn't get Lone Wolf. That's too bad. Yeah, oh well. Okay, so Jenny's turn. First strings first. Let's play Lola Santiago. So now we can uh, investigate. Now we're going to be a little higher for our investigate. Okay. We need to do some investigation. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a second action to take a resource. Now we're at five. Third action will investigate. If we use well connected, we're going to be at five versus three. Okay, we'll do six versus three since uh, Patrice can pitch in, live and learn. Okay, that seems good. So we're gonna investigate at six versus three. Minus one, that's a success. So um, we're gonna draw the top card of here and Jenny's gonna move to it. Ah, don't, ah, I guess. Just, <laughs> weird, okay. So I guess we'll just need to do like that. Okay, a little close, but. It's fine. All right, where are we? Salem Jail, 1692. Two clues, three shroud, not so bad. Um, and then, okay, once per game per player, you can test lower at three, and if we succeed, move to any revealed location. <coughs> not even Cotton Mather could explain the curves and angles smeared on the gray stone walls with some red sticky fluid. Okay, so that'll get us some clues. Um, we're at eight, we're at, what's it, seven out of ten, and we're still looking for the Witch House runes, so I'm kind of tempted to not investigate the Salem Gale. It's not worth any um, victory points. Okay, so that was all our actions. Yep, Lola, but, oh, okay. We could take a clue if we wanted, but I think we're going to go to other places now. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so cards and resources. Okay. Okay. Always good to see another weapon, although I don't think we need we need that right now. Okay, and then Patrice is going to get five new cards. Okay, so this doesn't flip over just yet. It's going to flip over when she has to draw another card. Okay, so we have multiple last chances. That's funny. 
get a resource. All right, new turn. Now we're going to advance because we're going to be at six, seven doom out of six. All right, what happens? The crone. A dizzying violet light emerges from the crevices of the ramshackle house behind cracks in the wooden paneling and underneath the floor, bathing you from every angle. An inhuman squeal mocks you as a figure emerges from the witch light. Only a hint of humanity remains in her crooked and broken form. The crone cackles with a nightmarish timber, her voice echoing and resounding from the realm beyond. Okay, we are in Act 2. So we spawn the set-aside Nahab in Keziah's room. Yikes. And then shuffle both set-aside copies of Ghostly Presence into the encounter deck. And then we grab Brown Jenkin. Right, which is familiar. Okay, so we get Nahab. We get Ghostly Presences which are going to get shuffled in. Okay, and then we're going to grab Brown Jenkin. Okay, here he is. All right, so we've got some baddies to deal with. Okay, spawns in Kazaya's room. Okay, all right, so what do we got here? She's going to engage Patrice. Okay, but Brown Jenkin is not. Okay, so some so what do we got here? Nahab, she who signed the black book. All right, so currently she is one, two, three to fight with. Uh, oh, is she a creature? She is not a creature. Okay, so she is one to fight. That's good. However, her health goes up by three. Oh, yikes. Okay, so she's gonna have five health. Country retaliate. Do not remove Doom from Nahab when the agenda advances. She gets plus X fight where X is the number of the current agenda. Ah, so she's going to be uh, four to fight. After the enemy phase begins, Nahab is ready to place a Doom on her. Okay, so she gets Doom. And we also have Brown Jenkin to deal with. Okay, so let's take a look at this new agenda. In the dazzling violet light of dream, the old woman and the fanged furry thing came again, and with a greater distinctness than on any former occasion. This time they actually reached him, and he felt the crone's withered claws clutching at him. Okay, so enemies are going to get three health, extra three health, which is nasty, and then by defeating Brown Jenkin or Nahab, we get a clue from the token bank. Okay, so that was the agenda. Now we're going to draw in counter cards. Centuries of Secrets. Okay, so she's going to test willpower at 5. Currently we are at a 6. Do I want to push it? Let's name... Are we in an extra dimensional location? We are not. That's kind of nasty. So we'll name the tablets with Recall the Future. And I think that'll be good enough. Yeah, let's just do that. So we were 1 over. Uh, yeah, 6 versus 5. We have to draw another token. Uh-oh, this could be bad. Minus three. So we fail this. All right, so we just grab the top three cards in the encounter deck. One, two, three. Okay. And then by failing this, we failed it by two. So we discard two more cards from the encounter deck. And if a curse treachery is discarded, deal direct damage to investigator and to each of your allies. So we would lose Peter here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not a curse. Not a curse. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, we Peter lives. That's good. Okay, what do we got here? Racked. Minus one to each of your skills during the first skill test each round, and then we can test willpower to get rid of it. Our willpower is not that great right now. But if we exhaust Nahab, she can get rid of it without spending an action. Okay, so we know that Jenny's going to come back. So I'm thinking what we're going to do is going to have Jenny come back and start shooting. Um... Yeah, that seems like a good idea. We're just gonna have Nahab, we're just gonna have Jenny come back, and start shooting. Nahab is four to fight with five health, I believe. Yeah, because she is plus three for it being agenda three, and she has plus three health thanks to agenda three. Four to fight and five health. Uh, Brown Jenkin, who's also nasty, is at let's see three to fight and four health. Ah, oh, this this uh starting to stack up here. All right, and we still have to find the, uh, let's see what we had, six clues there. And we still have to find the um, witch house runes. they got to be in here somewhere. Okay, so we actually have quite a bit to deal with. 
Okay, if we evade Nahab, she won't gain Doom. That's probably most important. So we don't really need to fight her, we just need to... Yeah, we just need to evade her. Fortunately, we have the Evasion Cat. Okay. <coughs> so the Evasion Cat we would evade at 5. 6 to Pete, thanks to Peter. Against 3. That's pretty good. We can also use Zeal to go up to 4 over. I like it. But we don't even really need to. We can just use Recall the Future to name the minus 4. Okay. So do we want Jenny or Patrice to go first? Let's have Patrice goes first, because if we evade Nahab, Jenny can come in and clear off her racked. All right, so first action, we're going to evade Nahab. Um, we are at, we're going to use Hope, okay? And we're going to be at five, six, let's go to seven versus three. Success, and we get to, uh, Oh, nice. And we get to shuffle all but one card from our discard pile into our deck. Okay. She's exhausted, which is good. Okay, and then we'll resolve the Elder Sign. So what are we not going to shuffle in? We are not going to shuffle in the Watcher from another dimension. Okay. We are going to shuffle in everything else. Okay, so that stays in the discard pile. That was a good first action. Okay, we don't need this Holy Rosary. We could play another Recall the Future at this point. That seems pretty cool. Yeah, I kind of like this idea. We just play another Recall the Future, and then we can start blasting things. Well, we can only blast Nahab because Brown Jenkin is... Um, he's aloof. So we would have to spend a second action to engage Brown Jenkin, and then a third action to shrivel him. Which is not the worst idea in the world. It lets us um, burn some of these cards. Like the last chance. Yeah. Hmm. Do we play the Recall the Future? Yeah, I have a feeling that's going to be handy. But if we play Recall the Future, we're going to have to blast Nahab. Not Brown Jenkin. Hmm. Okay. All right. I guess I think we're doing okay. We'll. Uh, although if we play Recall the Future, then our last chances get better for Jenny's checks. Okay, I like that even more. Okay, so let's. Uh, we're running out of out of space here. Let's uh, let's just put the tower aside over here for now. We we just we can remember it's there. Okay, so second action play recall the future. Third action will blast Nahab with shriveling. Okay, so currently we are at four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, and we can use the black book assigned to her to Peter to make this cheaper. Okay, so we are at seven versus Nahab's four. Okay, so we'll use this Recall the Future to name the minus four. And this Recall the Future to name Cultist. I like it. Okay, Skull, so we succeed. Uh, we take a horror um, from that. Um, we'll put it on the Holy Rosary. And we deal two damage to Nahab. Okay, one, two. Okay, so that was her action. End of her turn, we heal Peter. Okay. Jenny. First action, move. Second action, let's get rid of our racks because Nahab is... Um, Nahab has been evaded. Oh, that means Brown Jenkins is going to trigger. Yikes. Although we could go... All right, we could do this a different way. I forgot about that. We can go second action, engage Brown Jenkin. Third action, shoot with the Derringer and maybe get another action. I like it. We can use that last action to deal with Racked. Oh, but then that would provoke. Yeah, we don't want to provoke. Okay. So second action, we'll get rid of Racked, because that's handy. Third action, we'll engage Brown Jenkin. So that way he won't trigger his ability and make us all discard our cards. Square hands. 
Sadly, we're not going to get to use these these last chances. It's too bad. Yeah. Okay. Use the uh, violin. Discard Holy Rosary. Give Jenny. She's doing pretty well in resources. Oh, I was supposed to trigger a lone wolf. Um, so we'll give Jenny a card since she's doing okay in resources. All right, that's going to be handy in a little while. Okay, enemy phase. Nahab refreshes, and we'll give her to... Well, Patrice is doing well with Hope, so we'll give her to Patrice. Yeah. Okay, and then Brown Jenkin bites Lola Santiago. But we don't want her to bite Lola Santiago because of that one treachery that could cause a direct damage. So we're going to have it bite, but horror, Lola there. Okay. That was enemies. Uh, he actually exhausts, so he won't trigger his ability. Now we'll do cards and resources. So, card, resources. There we go. Magic number 10. Okay. Oh, five new cards. And one resource. Okay, pretty decent. Okay, new turn. We go to one doom out of eight. Okay, so we got a... Is this the last agenda? It is not, so we might be okay here. Encounter cards. What do we got? Pulled by the stars again. Oh, so if we don't move, we're going to take horror. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff stacking up. How's the encounter deck doing? Oh, it's almost empty. Okay. Disquieting dreams. Ooh. Test willpower at five. If you fail, put disquieting dreams into play in your threat area, and then at the end of the turn, discard the top card in the encounter deck. When it runs out, discard Squatting Dreams, reveal the top 10 cards of your deck, draw each weakness revealed, and discard each other revealed card. Yikes. Yikes. So we kind of want to pass this. Do we use Well Connected to get to 5? And watch this to get to 6. And then... Okay, so Action Window opens. Let's play the Premonition. And let's see what Jenny's dealing with here. Well, we're running out of space. So... Okay, so the first token drawn is going to be a cultist, which is awful because that's going to cause us to reveal another chaos token, unless Patrice pitches in the, the, the defiance. Then Jenny's going to be okay. All right, I like it. Okay, so Jenny needs to get up to five. Um, one of them can be, she has three base willpower. We can go four with defiance, so she needs one more willpower from watch this. However, she needs to succeed by one or more for watch this to really work. So she needs another willpower from somewhere. I don't want to pitch in the live and learn. So we can either burn the watch this, but not succeed by three or more. So we just don't spend any resources. That's probably what we're going to have to do here. Three, four, five. Yeah, let's just do that. So we won't spend any resources and watch this. Okay, we'll go to five, we'll name cultist. So Jenny goes to draw, she ends up drawing this cultist, triggers the, which gets rid of the premonition, and then gets rid of that. Okay, not ideal, but we got there. Okay, so we have Nahab to evade, and Brown Jenkin to fight. Okay, I think we're gonna start with Jenny here, because Jenny's in position to just start fighting Brown Jenkin. Okay, let's do it. Use the violin, discard winging it, give Jenny a card. Ooh, another watch this, this will be handy. Okay, because we're gonna get a bunch of resources now. All right, so if we attack Brown Jenkin, he is currently a three to fight and he has four hit points. So we need to get two shots off with the Derringer. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so if we shoot with a Derringer, we're currently at a five versus three. Let's boost this up even more. Let's go to seven versus three with the overpower. And eight versus three with watch this. And we'll bet three resources. Okay, I like these odds. Oh. Except when that happens. <laughs> Yeah, because that's like the second time tonight where like a nice check has been ruined by the tentacle. Fortunately, he doesn't retaliate. Okay, second action, we'll do it again. So we're going to be at five versus three. 
Burn the Enchanted Blade to go to six versus three. Can we help from over here? Not really. Can, yeah, so we'll be at six versus three. We'll use Ball Connector to go to seven versus three. Plus one. Okay, so we exceed by a lot, so we're going to deal two damage and get another action. Okay, so we still have two actions left. Third action, we'll shoot him again. So we're going to be at five versus three. So we're just going to have to go with it, I think. Let's go to... Mm, yep, five versus three. Success by a zillion. So we only can get a, um, an additional action... Um, once a turn, so but that's enough to deal with Brunjikin. Yeah, he has four health. He's dealt with. Okay, and then it means Jenny gets a clue from the token bank. Okay. So that was Jenny's third action. She has four, thanks to the Derringer triggering. I don't think it's quite twin forty five's time. So let's uh, overwrite this Derringer with another Derringer. Okay, and put three ammo on it. There we go. Okay, so that was Jenny. All right, no clues to get with Lola, so we're okay there. How are we doing on clues? We are at eight out of ten, but we but now I think our limiting factor is we need to find the witch house ruins. Okay, so Patrice just needs to evade Nahab, <coughs> and then I think keep looking for um, more locations. Okay. So if we evade Nahab with Augur, with Hope, sorry, we are at five versus three. We have Live and Learn to back us up, so let's just go with it. Six versus three, Peter Sylvester, nice. Okay, so with these, we're at six versus three, so we'll name the minus four with one Recall the Future, and we'll name the Cultist with the other. Okay, tablet, so we succeed, so she is evaded. Which is where we want her to be because we don't necessarily need to fight her. Yeah, we don't because we just don't want her to be um, ready at the beginning of the enemy phase. Okay, second action, let's investigate. We are currently at, we need to, because if we use six cents, we're going to be at four, five, four, five, six, seven, versus three, feels pretty good. Okay, so we succeed and get to go to a new area. This will also hold off pulled by the stars. Oh, we could have just done that second action. Oh, that's like even better because we can just get rid of it because Nahab's there. Let's do that. Second action, we're going to get rid of pulled by the stars. Third action, we'll, in, we'll do the investigation and we end up wherever this is. It has no clues. All right. It's unfortunate. We need clues. But it's the Witch House Ruins. Oh, so we just need two more clues. Huh. We can use those clues. But I don't know, there might be victory points in there. Okay, so you can investigate to heal horror here. All right. These appear to be the ruins of the Witch House, perhaps a vision of the building's future. It is a whirlwind of crumbling bricks, blackened moss grown shingles, and rotting planks and timbers. Okay, so we just need two more clues at this point. Okay, so that's all our actions. All right, so Peter heals. And Nahab readies and engages Jenny. Okay. So now we draw cards and get resources. Held in mirror. Okay, that's going to be handy because she's starting to hurt. And draw some new cards. One, two, three, four, five, and a resource. Oh, there's stargazing again. That'll be nice. Uh, we're not going to need Renfeld, so we'll dump him to the uh, to the violin, I think. All right, new turn. We are at two doom out of eight. Encounter cards. Disquieting dreams again. Okay, how are we doing on? Yep, encounter deck hasn't run out yet. Okay. Oh, that means we're not going to be able to play Stargazing because there needs to be 10 cards in the encounter deck. Yikes. It's too bad. All right, Disquieting Dreams. So we need to test. Okay, this is kind of awful because weaknesses come up. All right, so we are at four, five, six, seven against five. 
that's pretty good. Uh, are we in an extra dimensional location? We are. So we'll name skull with one recall the future, and we'll do minus three with the other. Skull. So we exhaust that to get two. So that'll put us up to a success. Okay. Over here, shapes the mess surge revolve each haunted ability on your location. Ooh, mean. Discards cards from the top of the encounter deck until hex is discarded. Draw that card, and it's going to surge. Okay, so we discard cards in the top of the encounter deck. Okay, so I guess we keep going until we get a hex. Looking for a hex. Looking for a hex. There's got to be a hex in here somewhere. I know there is. Man, we're just blowing through this encounter deck again. So other stuff is going to happen, so we get a pull by the stars. Okay, so the encounter deck emptied, which means we take two horror from evil past and test willpower. Yikes, so we are currently at three versus three. I guess we just have to test on the nose. I don't really want to do this. Yeah, we'll go to four versus three. Minus two. And she hits and Nahab attacks. Oh, so she's going to deal a damage and two horror. Oh, we're hurting here. Okay. And then over here, we take two horror, and then we test at seven versus three. Success. Okay. All right. So Jenny's, Jenny's hurting here. She's running low. We need to evade Nahab. We're currently at four versus three to do that. Okay. I don't think anything else triggered when, it em when the deck emptied. No, it didn't. Okay. So she needs to evade Nahab. And then I guess investigate. Another possibility is we can start blasting Nahab. She's at four. We're at five to attack. Although if we evade Nahab, we can then spend an action to get rid of Pull by the Stars, which I like even more. Okay, so we'll have Jenny go first. Start her turn with a Lone Wolf. Okay, she has five health and two damage. So I think we're going to start with Derringer. She retaliates, so we don't want to miss. Yikes, we don't have a lot of... We can't really boost, so we're just going to be at five versus four. That's not good. All right, so I think it's going to be evasion time. If we evade, we're going to be at four versus three. If we use cunning, we're going to be at six versus three, which I can get. I can get behind that. Six versus three. Success. So we evade Nahab. Good. All right. So now we have an option. We can either deal with pull by the stars. Yeah, we need to move or else we're going to take two horror. So second action, we're going to, this is an exhausted witch, so we will succeed at pull by the stars. Third action, we can either investigate, we can move over here, or we can maybe shoot Nahab now that she can't retaliate. Or we can play the hollowed mirror. So if we can, yeah, let's do that. Third action, play hollowed mirror. So that way, get some extra cards in our deck and we'll be able to start doing that next turn okay Patrice she's gonna come back and I think we're gonna have her help deal with Nahab or investigate so first action we move let's give Jenny Oh, definitely gonna play stargazing since we can okay so we put another copy of the stars are right into the top 10 cards of the encounter deck. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So that was our second action. I think third action, let's blast Nahab at this point. So that way, when she refreshes, we'll have Patrice take her because Patrice is, uh, you know, she's she's doing okay. Let's. We don't need Jenny to draw more cards at this point, so we'll use the violin, get rid of Augur, to give Jenny a resource. 
Okay, so if we blast a hob, how much doom is in play? There's two doom in play. So this will only give us a plus one. Well, we're at seven already, so that seems fine. So we'll go eight with prophecy. So we're at what? Eight versus four with shriveling. Success. So we take a horror next to shriveling, but deal two damage. Okay, so now she has one hit point left. Okay, that's good. That means, all right, that means Jenny's gonna, we're gonna be able to probably take her out with like the Tennessee Sour Mash next turn. Okay, so that's all our actions. Nahab is going to ready and engage Patrice. Yeah, she doesn't have prey, does she? Okay. Okay, then we're gonna draw cards and get resources. Oh, another little Santiago, so that's gonna give us basically some extra soak. But I think I'm actually gonna use it on an investigation check. Oh, I forgot to heal Peter. Okay, so we do that, and then we're going to get a bunch of new cards. Okay, we got Word of Projection. That'll be handy. And we've got Zeal, but I think we're going to mainly use Hope here. All right, new turn. We go to three Doom out of eight, and we'll get Encounter cards. Okay, so this is going to Surge. Resolve each one ability in your location. Oh, discard cards until you get a text. That is so mean. It is so mean that I think I'm gonna... Now, if we evade Nahab, then we can get rid of the Hex with another action. Yeah, that's gonna surge no matter what. So let's just... Okay, discard cards until we get a Hex. Ah, oh, but then we... But we might end up discarding the Stars are right. Okay, so I will cancel it. Use the black book to make it cheaper, and then deal another horror to Peter. Okay, so it surges. Strange geometry. Put it into play and move to it. Okay, and after the investigation phase ends, discard strange geometry. Move each investigator enemy there to the location with the most clues. Each investigator who is moved by this effect takes damage in a horror. Okay, and if it has no clues on it, we can move to any revealed location. Okay, so it's like, investigate this, or bad things happen. Okay, so is it connected anywhere? It is not, so she just ends up there. Okay, Jenny. Extra dimensional visions, uh, this again. Okay, so there's 13, there are 13 cards in the discard pile, so this is difficulty three, and we are at a three. Fortunately, if we fail this, we can lose our empty Tennessee Sour Mash, I think. We totally fail it, so we'll lose our empty tendency sour mash. Okay. So now do we do? Um, Jenny needs to deal with Nahab. Probably just finish her off. Could use Zeal here, actually. Yeah, we can just use Zeal to like automatically deal with Nahab, because Zeal is fast to put into play. I like it. She only has one hit point left. Yeah, it seems pretty good. We won't even have to test. Okay, so as a non-action, we're going to put Zeal into play. That causes us to discard Hope. We're then going to discard Zeal to automatically succeed at our fight check against um, Nahab. That'll take her out. Okay, and we're going to get to put one of... Um, we put Shuffle Zeal into our deck and put Hope or Augur into play. Okay, so we'll get Hope back. Oh, these cats are better than I thought. Okay, so first action we fought. Okay, and we automatically succeeded. So she doesn't go to the victory display. All right. We then get a clue from the token pool. Okay, so what are we at? We are at seven, eight, nine clues. All right, second action. Let's try to get out of the strange geometry. So we're going to be at seven versus four. Let's go to nine versus four. And in case of bad stuff, we're going to name the cultist with this Recall the Future, because that's the only thing that can stop us, really. Okay, we succeed, and we get this clue. So we're actually at 10 clues, and we get to move to any revealed location. All right, so we have options. So the question is, do we want to go get some more victory points? And I think we do, because we've kind of got control of the game at this point. Yeah, let's do that. Non-action, go to any reveal location. We'll go here. 
and then we're going to investigate with um, Sixth Sense to try to get a new um, get a new location. So we're at seven versus three. Let's take this opportunity right now to um, drop this liquid I found and give Jenny a card. Okay, that'll be useful to scoop up clues. Okay, so we're at seven versus three to investigate. Draw another token. Oh, I forgot to use those. We still succeed though. Okay. <coughs> okay, so now we get go to unknown places. All right, so she ends up in the city of Elder Things. It is worth a victory point. Excellent. So after you, okay, so as an option, we can um, take two horror to put the top card of the Unknown Places deck into play unrevealed. Oh, that's handy. That means Jenny can just go to it without even like investigating. She'd take two horror to do that. Um, am I okay with that? Just to get it into play. All right, so let's get a location connector. Yeah, she'd have to spend two moves to get there, though. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so we can either have Jenny investigate here. And get the and get a location, or we can have yeah, we'll just let's just do it. All right, she'll take two horror. Do that and one on Miss Doyle. Okay. So that goes into play unrevealed. Okay, and gets a location connector. Okay, that was her last action. All right, so this is Shroud three. So I'm thinking maybe we can have Jenny come in and scoop up with the uh, fingerprint kit. Yeah, I think it's about time to do that. So Jenny triggers Lone Wolf. Okay, first action, play Fingerprint Kit. <coughs> okay. Second action, we'll move to the City of the Elder Things. <coughs> and then we'll uh, investigate. That's the third action, using our Fingerprint Kit. Okay, so we're currently at five versus three. Um, Patrice can't boost it. Oh, we should have saved the... Um, should have saved the look what I found. Whoops. Okay, so we'll boost with well connected, so now we're gonna be at six versus three. No, we need to not do this. We need to not do this. We need to move there, and we need to play Soothing Melody, because we are on the verge of going nuts. Okay, so instead of investigating, we're gonna use Soothing Melody. Let's heal our damage and get a card. Another Soothing Melody, very nice. Okay, so we went fingerprint kit, move, soothing melody. All right, so they're still together. Okay, so that's all our actions. So now we're gonna draw cards and get resources. There's the thing that follows. It was coming up eventually, so it's gonna go, let's just say it comes from the Twilight Abyss. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, after the investigation phase, that is gone. Okay. All right, so that was our card, and then we get two resources. Okay, Patrice gets five cards and a resource. Okay, there's Zeal again, and we have Luckies and a Ward of Protection. Very nice. Oh, Peter heals. Okay. All right, new turn. Four Doom out of eight, and let's get encounter cards. Ugh, we would have to grab Brown Jenkin. No, we're not going to grab Brown Jenkin. Instead, we're going to play our Word of Protection and deal a horror to Peter. Yeah. Oh, this again. Okay. So she's going to want to move. Okay, so I think we want to have Jenny investigate here and then probably move there, so that way she can deal with that. We can also test it. Oh, well, first things first, we want to use Soothing Melody, I think. Okay, so we're going to do that first. First action, play Soothing Melody. We're going to heal one of each this time and get a card. Nice. Okay, we want to move. So I think we're going to go second action, fingerprint kit. Okay, so we're at five versus three. Let's use 
use this to go to 6 versus 3. Then I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. Oh, again. <sighs> okay. Third action. Let's move to not have that trigger. But before we move, spend three. Use Lola Santiago, get a clue. Oh, that's awful. Third action move, and where are we now? Oh, more victory points. Court of the Great Old Ones. After you enter there, test willpower. Oh, for each point you fail by take a horror. Ouch. Oh, and we don't have enough resources to make this work. All right. Well, hopefully we won't fail by too much. Minus two. Okay, so we fail by two, so we take two horror. Oh, we are on our last legs again. Fortunately, next turn we can heal it up. Okay, Jenny is just not, she's just not being very lucky this game. Okay, so that was Jenny. Patrice, let's just look for clues. Fortunately, we have a connected revealed location, so that way um, special tokens with six cents are gonna be pretty sweet. Okay, so first action, we'll use six cents. Um, we are going to be at four, four, five, six, seven as usual. Uh, she used the violin before Jenny left. Uh, let's say we did that and gave Jenny a resource. Okay. All right. So we're at seven versus three. Okay. We will, since we cover, we're covered, we're covered for the whole bag. Let's say cultist for recall the future, for this recall the future. Okay, so we succeed, and oh, since it's a spooky token, we can investigate at either location. Yeah, we'll just investigate at this one because it's farther away. Okay, that was first action. Second action, do it again. Name cultist again. Seven versus three. Success. Also a skull. Grab a token from over there. Third action, do it again. Name the skull, name the cultist. Okay, success. Then we get a one from where we are now. Okay, so that's all our actions. Hunter's hunt. Okay, and now we do cards and resources. Okay, that's pretty good. And now we discard our luckies. Sadly, oh, Peter heals. Sorry about that. And now we get five new cards. Okay. So we got some willpower here. And we have Drawn to the Flame, which could actually be handy. All right, new turn. We're almost there. We have, I think we're gonna, we're gonna, I think we're gonna go for it. I think we're gonna go for all the locations. All right, five doom out of eight. And let's get encounter cards. The stars are right. Excellent. Okay, so um, who needs the actions? I think Jenny needs the actions because she needs to be able to, um, get, you know, take a move. So we're gonna give Jenny a card, a resource, and an action. So we'll move that from the game. The action right now, before she draws this bedeviled, is gonna be. Yeah, let's um, let's use fingerprint kit to investigate. Let's just finish it. Okay, so right now we're at five to investigate against three. Let's use Lola. So go to six, seven versus three. Okay. Success, so we get both these clues. Okay, so that was her action. I know that next card she draws, she's gonna take a horror. So it's kind of weird. We can use the soothing melody to heal to horror, but then draw a tard and take a horror. Kind of, kind of problematic. <laughs> but then she draws Bedeviled. Okay, so she can't, she won't be able to use the fingerprint kit now. All right. So what do we do? Uh, we need to get these two clues. We need to deal with this thing. Jenny needs to heal. All right. So definitely she's gonna go first action, play Soothing Melody, heal to horror, then um, she, she draws a card. So that happens before this goes into the discard pile. Okay, she draws a card, takes a horror. Okay. Okay, that was her first action. We need to move. Oh, she gets Lone Wolf. I'm sorry, folks. I'm messing that up. Second action, she moves. Okay, so this is coming for her. 
but I think we're going to have Patrice blast it. Okay, so we've dealt with that. So third action, well, not a non-action, we're going to use Lola Santiago to get this clue. That way Patrice only has to use one six sense. Last action, we can try to test against this since Patrice can help. Yeah, and she has a lot of, yeah, and she has a lot of willpower to help with. Okay, so last action, she'll test against the uh, pull by the stars. She'll be at three versus three. Let's go to five versus three, and let's use, we're not going to need this this turn, but let's just do this one now. Six versus three. Okay. During the action window, I'll go ahead and discard Peter Sylvester to let Jenny have a card. Now she has a full deck. Okay, so we're at three. Three, four, five, six versus three. Success. Nice. We get rid of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that one I'll have to get rid of next. Okay. So that is Jenny. Yeah. That's Jenny. She went move. Lola Santiago, healed, and yeah, tested against the the horror, the hex. Okay, so Patrice, we're gonna get this clue. We're gonna move in, and then, although we don't even need to get this clue because Jenny could get it next turn. Yeah, I think we have the spare actions. We can blast the thing that follows. Okay, so we're gonna go get the clue, move, and then blast it. Although if we don't blast it, we can go for that location. Yeah, we still have this location to get. All right, here we go. First action, move. Okay, second action, we're gonna shrivel the thing that follows. So we are at seven versus three. Pretty good. We'll name cultist with this one. Success, so we blast the thing that follows. Goes back into Jenny's deck. Okay, that was second action. Oh, wait. Oh, Patrice can test this for her. Back the truck up. All right, first action. All right, we're going to we're going to back the truck up. First action, we're going to do this. Yeah, 7 versus 3. I like it. Name cultist with this. There we go. We succeed by zillion. Okay. So that gets rid of the bedeviled. Okay, a little bit of rollback, but it's totally worth it. And we get to trigger an Elder Sign. So what doesn't go back in the deck? The Watcher from another dimension is not going to go back in the deck. Okay, so all this goes back in the deck. Okay, so first action, we got rid of the Bedeviled. Second action, we moved. Third action, we shriveled. All right, so that actually works out fine. So that is all our actions. Peter heals. Okay, so now we do cards and resources. Okay, okay, and new cards. Okay, there's stargazing again. For, unfortunately, we've already played it twice, so it's just gonna be used for the question mark. All right, new turn. We are at six doom out of eight, and let's. See what we get. Rats, it's okay. Um, Jenny will have to deal with it. Disquieting dreams again. Oh, no good, because she's not good at willpower. All right, so I think we're just going to have to test against it. Yeah, because we don't really have any way to boost. So we totally fail, yep, as is the trend. So it goes in our threat area, and then we're going to be discarding cards from the top of the encounter deck at the end of her turn. Well, that's kind of ugly. How's the encounter deck doing? It has 17 cards left. All right, we might be okay. Okay, so let's um, have Patrice go looking for the last location, I think. She has rats to deal with, though, so we might have to have Jenny go first, because remember, because Shriveling's gone? Yeah, we could also evade them, but that's action. I don't want to evade them. I'd rather just punch them. If we punch them, we're at two versus one. Well, I guess we can use Unexpected Courage and Stargazing, and Lucky. 
this seems okay. Oh wait, we're not there. Oh wait, hold on. These are not regular rats. These rats are have four health. <laughs> so maybe evading them is a good idea. Okay, if we evade them and use hope, we can be at six versus three. I like this. So we'll exhaust hope to evade. We're going to be at six versus three. We'll name the cultist and the minus four with those two recall the features. Okay, so we evade the rats. That is a weird place to be, evading rats. Okay, second action, we'll use six cents to investigate at seven versus three. Success. So we find the last location and warp to it. Okay. Moldy halls. Okay, so this is not worth a victory point. You request aid. You can spend an action to request aid from your past self. Each investigator at this location may return one card from his or her discard pile to his or her hand. Each investigator does so remembers that he or she meddled with the past. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's kind of cool. All right, so let's... Um, but it's not worth victory points and it doesn't give clues, so let's just head back here. Okay. Jenny. Jenny's going to grab this clue with Lola Santiago. Oops. Okay, feeling good. All right, so now we have tons of clues. So now we just need to head up to the Witch House Ruins at this point. Okay, so that was a non-action. First action, move here. Do we want to blast the rats? They have four health. But they're only one to fight. Yeah, and the Derringer will give us extra action, so it actually works out okay. Second action will blast. Okay, so we're going to be at five versus one. We want to succeed by three. All right, so we're going to have Patrice pitch in an unexpected courage. So we're at five, six, seven versus one. Feels pretty good. Seven minus two is five, so we succeed by at least three. So we deal two damage to the rats and get an extra action. Okay, so that was our second action. Okay, so third action. Yeah, it's kind of like we have a fourth action here. Third action, let's try to finish them off. Five, we're three, four, five. Let's go six. Six versus three, we only need to succeed by one here. Mm, we're not going to need this, so we'll go to seven versus three. Oh, not again. Not again. Okay. It's seven versus one, even, and we still fail, auto fail, and we lose the top three cards of the encounter deck. <laughs> Last action, we could just blast the rats again. Fine. Five versus one, not five versus three. <laughs> oh no, okay, success, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This has been, Jenny's luck has been awful today. All right, end of her turn. She discards the top card of the encounter deck. Okay, oh, there's Brown Jenkin. Glad we didn't, we're not gonna draw him. So we burned through another Derringer, and we've gotten another tentacle on another Derringer. Yeah, that, thus is life. So I have a feeling the Twin 45s are going to come out next turn. And I think I forgot to use Lone Wolf again. Let's just do that now. Also, we're going to have Patrice discard Renfeld to give Jenny a resource. All right, all in our action windows there. OK, so that's all our turns. So we're going to do cards and resources. Thing that follows is back, so it's going to end up over there. Fortunately, we're just going to go straight for the exit at this point. Two resources. Patrice okay, gets five new cards. OK, uh, not a lot that we need, but another word of protection is always nice to have. OK, new turn. Seven Doom out of eight. We are in the Witching Hour. Let's see what we get. Bedeviled. Okay. Kind of nasty, but we're just going to cancel it. And... No, we're going to use the Black Book to save a resource and put one on Peter. And then Ward of Protection puts a uh, Horror on Peter as well. So that is canceled. 
over here. Ooh, test willpower. Ooh, willpower is bad. There are 25 cards in the discard pile, meaning that this is a difficulty four. <coughs> and if she fails, discard an asset. Well, I don't think we need any more clues, so we're going to dump the fingerprint kit if we fail. Yeah, it seems fine. Okay, we fail, and we'll lose our fingerprint kit. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go straight over here. We need to... We have to only investigate as the witch house friends may spend their work and numbers of clues as a group to advance. So we have... So if we have Patrice go first, she can just walk in and spend the clues. Yeah, we'll just do that. Okay, we'll have Patrice go first. Um, use the violin now. Dump Augur to give Jenny a resource. No, we don't need to give Jenny a resource because she's going to get Lone Wolf. We'll give Jenny a card. Nah, we'll give her a resource. Okay. First action, move to the West House Ruins. Then, as a non-action, we're gonna lose. We're gonna spend ten clues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait a minute, that can't be right. That's nine right there. Yep, ten clues. Look at all those clues. <laughs> okay. A profane ritual. Searching through the ruins, you find a rotting hole in the slanted ceiling, leading to a closed-off attic. Amidst the debris are crushed and splintered bones, some human and some not. <coughs> Sorry about that. More of Kaziah's awful tomes are scattered about, filled with pages of dark rituals and black spellcraft. On the floor, a circle has been carved, or perhaps gnawed into the wood. At the center lies a spatter of dried blood and a jagged knife. What terrible rituals were performed in this profane space? Perhaps there is a way you can know for sure. You take the knife and prick your hand deep enough for blood to well in your palm. Using Kazaya's formula, you draw a pattern in the circle and carve a path through time. Okay, so we set aside, we put the set aside site of the sacrifice location into play. All right. So that is connected to the hourglass, which is this. So it's basically like right here. Okay, and it gets a location connector. We have really explored this map. I wanted them. I wanted them victory points though. God, snapping. Let's do it like that. If it is agenda one, two, or three, it is. So we find Nahab and place two doom on her and place her at the side of the sacrifice. Where did we put her? There she is. Okay, so she gets two doom. And that her doom doesn't go away when the agenda advances. Okay. Um, find Brown Jenkin and place him at Nahab's current location, right? Because he always follows her like a loyal little rat. There he is. Okay. Act three, stopping the ritual. You part the seams of space-time and arrive at your destination. It is the same cramped attic, but in a different time. The room is dark, save for a violet glow emanating from the far edge, where the floor falls into oblivion. From out of the abyss, the ancient crone and her, her familiar emerge. Okay, I'm gonna, um, my throat is getting really dry, so I'm gonna get a drink and uh, be right back. All right, I had to pause and get a drink there, folks. This has been a long adventure. Okay, so we have set up Act 3, Stopping the Ritual. You part the seams of space-time and arrive at your destination. It is the same cramped attic, but in a different time. The room is dark, save for a violet glow emanating from the far edge, where the floor falls into oblivion, and from out of the abyss, the ancient crone and her familiar emerge. Okay, so we've got some special rules here. Uh, Nahab cannot leave the site of the sacrifice. Okay. So she's going to stick around and guard it. Okay, when she's defeated, instead of discarding her... Okay, so she's just gonna, she's going to be just like the special the Spectral Watcher when she's defeated. Okay, just locks her for a turn. And then if there is no Doom on Nahab, we advance. Okay, so you have to somehow remove these two Doom off of her. There's no way to, to do it on her card. So I'm guessing this has to do with the Site of the Sacrifice. Presently, he was in a crude, windowless little space with rough beams and planks rising to a peak just above his head. 
and with a curious slanting floor underfoot. Propped level on that floor were low cases full of books of every degree of antiquity and disintegration, and in the center were a table and bench, both apparently fastened in place. Okay, so we haven't taken any actions yet. So let's, um, I'm thinking what we're going to do now is we're just going to sprint in and see what's involved with getting rid of Doom. Yeah, I think that's the best thing we really can do at this point. Okay, so we'll start with, do I want to start with Jenny or Patrice? Mm, Jenny's kind of hurting, kind of hurting here, so I think we're going to start with Patrice. We've got Hope here to help with evasion, to help evade Nahab, so let's do that. Okay, so first action, she'll move to the side of the sacrifice. Yikes, that's a bunch of clues. Okay, so as an action, we can spend two clues. Investigators at this location can spend two clues to remove one doom from Nahab. Oh, that's good. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity from Nahab. Okay. And then as a haunted, you must either place a doom on Nahab or Nahab attacks you. Okay, so we only have to do this twice. So we just need more clues. Patrice only has one clue, so she can't do this herself. Jenny, however, has tons of clues. So if we can get Jenny to just sprint in and remove the doom, then I think we're going to be okay. All right. So Nahab engages. Uh, Brown Jenkin just sticks around. Okay, so Nahab, she is no tougher to evade. Um, she has a lot of bunch of health, but I think we're going to try to rush this um, by evading Nahab. Um, because it also says here, if uh, after the enemy phase begins, if Nahab is ready, place a doom on her. So we need to get her exhausted during the um, during the investigator phase. Okay, so we spend an action to move in. Second action, we're going to evade Nahab. We'll use hope to do it, and we're going to be at six versus three. Um, we can't we can't boost it with the cards in our hands, so let's go over here. I suddenly wish I kept Augur. Okay, six versus three. So we're covered on the skulls. We're covered on the, the tablets. We just need the minus four. And of course, the um, the cultists are always bad because we don't want to draw a cultist, reveal another one, and then end up with a tentacle. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to name cultist and minus four with Recall the Future. Here we go, six versus three. Success. Okay, so she is evaded with our sec with our second action. Okay. She can't deal with she can't get any clues here. So I'm thinking what she'll do is she'll um, pull away Brown Jenkin. And what else can I do with this? Yeah, I'm thinking we can pull away Brown Jenkin. Yeah. Um she'll take She'll take a bunch of, she'll take some damage at the uh, during the enemy phase, but it, it'll prevent Brown Drinking from triggering and causing Jenny to lose all these cards and then draw extra cards. We really don't want Jenny drawing, um, searching for Izzy at this point. Okay, so we'll engage Brown Drinking. All right, Jenny's turn. Okay, so she needs to spend two moves to get in there. Okay. All right, what do we got here? And then as an action, oh, she triggers Lone Wolf. Got to remember that. Oh, and I also got to remember that Peter heals. Man, I'm uh, starting to lose my way here. Okay, so she moves twice. Um, as her third action, she can spend two clues and remove a doom. That seems like a good idea. Another thing we can do is we can get out the twin 45s in case um, things go bad next turn, which I kind of like even better. Because if things start going badly next turn and we need to uh, we just shoot things, um, we'll actually be armed if we have twin 45s. Uh, the good news is I'm not going to need that many shots. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to play the twin 45s. question is how many bullets. I think I'm going to go down to, let's see, I could just go three bullets here. But I don't think, but if we need them, that's not going to be enough, I don't think. Although we could just, although it might, even, might actually be enough. Three bullets might do it. Although, oh, we have no shriveling over here. Okay. So let's go down to let's do six bullets. That seems like good enough. And we also keep our we keep five resources. Yeah, for using using that for other things. Okay, six ought to be enough. Okay, so we have moved twice and played the twin forty fives. Enemy phase. Okay, enemy phase. Brown Jenkin attacks. And then um, when the enemy phase ends, uh, he will not be ready in order to trigger his ability. 
Okay, so he's going to do a damage and two horror to um, to Patrice because of hypochondria. Okay, so we'll give one to Peter, and we'll take another horror here. Okay, she's doing okay. All right, uh, Nahab readies, and let's have... Yeah, the cat make, makes her really good at evading, so I think we'll uh, we'll let Patrice engage her. Okay, so cards and resources. Easy mark, always handy. And up, oh, new card, new hand of five. What do we got? Okay, this, this seems okay. Um, we got some, yeah, we got some stuff to help with evasion, so that'll be good. Okay, I don't really need these two right now. All right, new turn. So we are going to advance. We're at 10 Doom out of eight. We do not remove the Doom from Nahab. We just advance. Okay, what do we got here? An Awakening. A sudden flash of violet light causes you to reel backwards. The spectral form of the crone is broken and shattered, but as you fall, you can see a sinister grin play across her, mistaken, her misshapen face. A jolt of pain surges through you as your head strikes the surface of the wall. Ooh. And the witch's terrible grin is the last thing you see before everything goes black. When you awaken, the witch light is gone, but a vision is burned into your mind. The ancient crone bent over a slanted floor, leering gleefully at a rotting book, a misshapen knife in her crooked fingers. Behind her, the twilight abyss extends into oblivion, and a gaping maw begins to close. Okay, so we are running out of time here. Okay, so it is Act 3, so we place a Duma Nahab. Okay, so let's do that. Oh, I was supposed to have removed one last turn, so it goes back up to 2. No, wait, we didn't. No, what was I thinking? I, uh, I played the Twin 45, so now we have 3 Doom to deal with. Fortunately... Jenny's got the clues to do it. Okay. Agenda four. Marked for sacrifice. Either this house is truly haunted, or its strange angles and eerie light are playing tricks on your curse-oddled mind. Are these ghostly visions real, or echoes of the house's gruesome past? Okay, so now they have tons of health. Okay. But I think we're just going to try to blitz it this turn. I also managed to forget to move the thing that follows. All right, here we go. Encounter cards. Whoops. Okay, what do we got here? Swarm of rats, and so that'll just engage, and then diabolic voices. All right, so she's just gonna make a test, and when she fails it, <laughs> um, she'll discard some random cards from her hand. Okay, it is one tougher for each copy of diabolic voices in the discard pile. How many are there? We have one. Just one. So we are at a three versus four at this point. Um, why not? We'll use Well Connected. So we'll be at four versus four. And we can have Patrice pitch in a Prophesy because there is three Doom in play on Nahab. So four, five, six versus four. Success. Okay. Okay, so actually this turn is pretty simple. Um, because Jenny doesn't have anything engaged with her, she can just spend six clues to remove six doom from Nahab, and that will end it. And I think I'm just not going to take any risks. I think I'm just going to go for it. All right, so we pile up this doom, this uh, these clues. We remove the doom from Nahab, and yep, and that's that. Okay, we advance. Yep, there's no limit on that. Okay. All right, here we go. Ritual averted. The ancient crone lets out a banshee's wail as you dismantle her unholy ritual. The room unfurls through space-time, the cramped, slanted walls unfolding to reveal the oblivion beyond. The creature, who was once Keziah Mason, croaks a loathsome curse as her shapeless form is pulled into the void. Bit by bit, the wood panel flooring below your feet breaks apart. Then you are ripped. The pull from the stars, a muddy alleyway, the flute in the woods, the roaring abyss, the gaze of the watcher, the tower, a green hillside, the black vortex, the screams of the accused, the piper, three arrows, a sacrifice, a ringing bell, an ascension, and you emerge from the anomaly, crashing painfully onto the floor. Okay, so the, these are the things we experience, um, the two of them experience as uh, 
Yep, as they travel through, you know, an anomaly in space and time, and then they emerge. Resolution two. Okay, we made it. Ooh, that was a long one. Oh man, my voice is dying here. Okay, so that went pretty well. You can see here that uh, Patrice had a full suite of tons of assets there, including even including the tower. And she's got a new one, the Black Book. That was pretty useful, especially with Peter Sylvester out. It's like, hey, Peter, read the Black Book. That you know, go find this passage for me. And Peter, he just, he just, he just keeps on trucking. He just takes the horror. He just plays football, and uh, he, just, he just, he just knows that if he just plays more football, then uh, all the uh, all the the bad stuff is going to go away. Yeah, the uh, the cats, the charisma cats, were um, were actually pretty strong. I was really impressed. Um, the ability to just auto succeed against the um, Watcher from another dimension, I think uh, alone makes them pretty good. But um, just having hope here to evade stuff at a ba at a value of six was um, was pretty nice. So that was that was a good decision. Okay, so um, also my choice of um, bringing in one copy of Stargazing in order to play play it twice for two for two stars are right. That actually worked out. I only needed one copy because I ended up playing it both times. So over over with Jenny. Um, I noticed that the Derringers worked out really well, except uh, we kept we drew tentacles. We just kept drawing tentacles whenever we boosted her tests. Um, she has some trouble with resources because of that haunted ability um, that caused her to lose resources early in the game. So she was kind of behind, and she was also drawing a lot of tentacles at key moments. So um, I think uh, Jenny, just in general, needs a bit more boost to her to her uh, her skills. So I'll look into that um, as I go forward. But let's see how much XP we've earned. All right, but for oh yeah, and we should go to resolution two. All right, resolution two. When you come to, you are lying on the wooden floor of Walter Gilman's room. The trappings of Kazaya's foul practices are nowhere to be found, nor is the fanged, bearded rat Kazaya's familiar, as you now understand. Just as you are about to rise to your feet, you spot something glinting in a corner of the room, crawling underneath Gilman's bed. You reach out and grab the trinket. It is a worn nickel crucifix, similar to the ones you saw in the loom fixer's room. You shove it into your pocket before leaving, leaving the troubling room and its strange angles behind. You learned as much as you care to uncover about Keziah Mason, the witch who once inhabited this old and forsaken house. As you step out into the chilly November air, you turn and take one last look at the decrepit witch house. You fear that though you may never enter this place again, and your thoughts and dreams, you will never truly leave it behind. Okay, so we get Victory X, uh, for each card in the victory display, and two bonus experience as we gain insight into Arkham's mysterious past. So let's count this out. All right, looks like it's all in locations. So we got one, two, three, four. Okay, so yeah, we put in the extra effort to make sure we could, um, to make sure we could get all these uh, locations here. Um, nothing from the victory display. All right, here we go. So we get six, six experience. And then under Mementos Discovered, we're going to get Gilman's Journal, Kazai's Formula, and Worn Crucifix. And then, ooh, the good stuff. Any one investigator may choose to add the Black Book to his or her deck. Oh, but if an investigator does choose to include the Black Book, add a skull to the Chaos Bag. I don't know. This was pretty sweet. And she's not using her other hand for anything else, so I think we're just going to do it. Yeah, we're just going to... Yeah, we're going to do it. We are going to add a skull to the chaos bag and take the black book. I think that's gonna be pretty slick. It is a bit expensive to play though, so we'll see how it works out. Okay, so uh, we've uh, we've managed to survive this, uh, this marathon of an adventure. And uh, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and have a great night.